welcome to another episode of the Bastard Sermon. This is one of your three hosts, Cody Hucker, Patrick Seda, and Luke Young. And today we've got on the phenomenal local artist, Danny Babcock. Give it up, motherfuckers. Yes! <laughs> it feels welcome. So, Thank you. It feels Thank so you. strange doing that intro twice because yeah. we just had technical <laughs> issues for all of our listeners and we just had to redo that whole thing. All right, yeah. Danny's, Danny's a local artist in the Cincinnati area and he's a really fucking phenomenal, dope ass artist. So on and so forth. Thanks, man. <laughs> we're going to get all into that shit this episode. But first, we're going to start out with what our episode, is, our show is all about. Let's Which is a video of some dude shirtless in bed looking like he's about to drop the hottest SoundCloud album of 2019. He might. Let's see this shit. Are you mad? Baby. What? The beans you cook getting to me. The beans are getting to me. You got poop. You know it. Oh, yeah, let it out. What's oh, hold on, don't rush the poop now. Oh, giddy up. Ah, don't bite my ass. Okay, let it out. I'm Hold on, Pat. Is this an ass-eating video? Is that what we opened up this show with? <laughs> To be honest, I don't really know exactly how far it goes. It's just really fucking weird. He's about to fucking rip it hard. Refried beans. Okay, okay, I'm waiting for it. Okay, so it's this dude laying in bed in what appears to be a hotel room, and his woman's eating. Is he? Is she eating his ass? No, I, I'm, she was she, wicked. She gets it. in there though. I can tell oh, that yeah. she pulled his boxers down to get a full face attack blast. You know, no filter. She buried her nose in that crevice deep enough to get the underwear stuck in between the cheeks. At least I couldn't even tell what was going on because the camera's all in front of it, so you don't even really know. It's the audio is real shaky. I didn't really understand what they were saying. I mean, that's, Dude. Good, that's good cinematography though, leaving some to the imagination. We pull yep. that mic yeah. right up. Yep, that thing might might sink on you there. You might have to keep pushing it back up to your mouth. Oh, Sorry yeah. about that. Cool. Dude. <laughs> Okay, well, that's Damn. an interesting way to start this off, but <laughs> Hey, we've got that's Danny Babcock. That's, that's what this show's all about. That's what this show's all about. Wet farts in your mouth. <laughs> yeah, here's a dude farting in his lady's mouth. Just how to start dude, this I mean, thing off, right? It's just, I think that's just so strange that there's people out there that enjoy other people's farts, like, that close. Like, you're that intimate with someone. Like, how does that even start in a relationship? Like, I'm going to fart. Like, you, you mind if I put my face in it? Danny, you got that likes farts in your mouth or uh, likes not to fart? Per- not particularly, but what I'm thinking about is uh, there's an old saying that water seeks its own level, and yeah. uh, that's an example of water seeking its own level. Like he, she, he wants to fart in mouths, she wants to be the mouth farty, and uh, they found each other, and you know that's a water seeks its own. In any other relationship, they'd be it'd be a terrible matchup, but these two found each other, you know. Probably on like a fart tender, or yeah. Something. Fartpeoplemeet.com. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like the the Karate Kid fart philosophy that you just dropped on the last oh, yeah, episode. Yeah, the, yeah, 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 yeah. There's some Mr. Miyagi knowledge that he's about to drop. All day. But yeah, we talk about a lot of fart jokes and stupid shit like that. But um, So let's get into the art stuff. I, I wanted to really... <laughs> what kind of fucking segue is that, Pat? Fart, art, Put, the, know, art, put it, the art in yeah, fart. Yeah, we're all about fart. So let's talk about your art yeah. now. Let's yeah. do that. Yeah, yeah. Let's get yeah. into it. Yeah, I dig it. Totally. Two, so, two you, things I make. So I saw that there was murals <laughs> and whatnot. Like, how many have you done? Where have you done it? Which one's your favorite? Uh, yeah, <clears throat> I definitely get that question from like when I'm working on a job. Somebody will be like, "Do you love it? Do you love this? Is this one of your favorites ever?" And uh, I I don't uh I don't know if I necessarily have a favorite. Uh, I try my best to do like multiple like styles techniques. Um, so uh, there's like there's not necessarily a favorite. There's just like I try to just like focus on a particular mastering a certain style or or making an original. I don't like say for example a tattoo shop. If I do a tattoo, if I do three tattoo shops in the same city, I don't want them to look the same. So I want each of them to be of interest individually. So how could I like you know pick a favorite? Like I want them to be as individual as possible. Um, but uh, the favorite's always the opposite. If I'm doing some clean, beveled stuff, then I, you know, I'd rather be doing some spattery, squirty stuff. If I'm doing some messy 3D looking stuff, I'd rather be doing some 2D poster looking image. You know, it's always, you know, variety, spice of life stuff. Right. So something that keeps moving, something that keeps growing and progressing. Yeah. And you, don't, you don't feel like you're some stagnant style right. all the time. Like, what's your favorite episode? 
you know, it's same kind of thing. There's probably peaks and valleys and interesting points and in, of different things, you know, that kind of thing. It's like they're like episodes. That know? makes perfect sense. You I got, like I like the way you yeah, it worded that word like that translation. Like, You've got some super crispy work, dude. Like thanks, all man. your like everything that you put up is super quality. Like these these paintings right here are these like a how do you make something like that on glass? Um, that is that's unheard of downtown. The like boutique Nike store, Cincy. Um, so that like the last like two or three years, I've done like seasonal window stuff for them. Uh, the first two times were just straight up spray paint on the glass. But I have a a method I do where I put a uh, like a low adhesive material on the windows and then paint on that and then contour cut it so it looks like it's just straight spray paint on the window. Uh, but then it's more like an adhesive thing. This particular case is just classic like window splash paint. And I did put some spray paint on it because then I'm painting spray paint on the window paint. Uh, but uh, yeah, because that store also, you know, they really, they come from like street culture stuff. So they want to have that so, like spray paint touch on their stuff. Um, but I try to do like a refined version of that. Um yeah, those like Phil who runs that place is real, real loose with it. Where he just kind of gives me an idea and like tells me to run with it, and I try to do do as much as I can given time and now, stuff like that. Those pieces that you're talking about that you use the low adhesive that you paint on and contour with yep. and whatnot is yep. that something that can be removed and saved for a future use? Not remove and replace. Not like a fat head, like a fat head wall graphic where those are allegedly re repositionable. Um, but uh, so yeah, not no, but it would come off easy. So in terms of just like efficient removal low tack to remove it easy um but uh yeah not we've tried to repurpose stuff uh on one of the windows i did for him they had the guy um name is not in my head right this second but uh alien workshop art direction <coughs> uh skate deck stuff um uh that was the windows before these where that was all printed vinyl graphics i installed for him but that that printed vinyl that they had made was pretty heavy duty so some of the smaller pieces we were able to take off and they could use them as stickers and stuff this but, thing's i mean i wouldn't ever want to take it off my window if i was like a yeah, storefront owner because it's fucking phenomenal it's yeah. these for our listeners there's these snowmen that are holding a snowball and they're having a snowball fight and it says uh what is unheard of unheard of is the store name. yeah unheard of from it's not a skate yeah. shop uh, they, they cater towards like, uh, skate culture. Um, uh, it's like a boutique level Nike, Nike and Adidas yeah. accounts. Um, but yeah, they come from like, uh, skateboard culture, like from anonymous skate shop. Yeah. Uh, they kind of branched off of that, uh, probably 10 years ago or something. And then, uh, uh, so they, 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 that's a heavy element of their demo for sure is, is skate related stuff. Um, I'm always impressed by like the the folks that go in there, it's like Bengals players and, you know, internet rappers and stuff. Like I, I, like I always wonder like how the fuck do people come to Cincinnati and go to this store of all places? And it, and I, I it's they, a very popular store. Yeah. It's, I mean, all, anonymous too. Like yeah. I, I grew up next to it. Maybe that's how I yep. probably knew more of it, yep. but I mean, these are really popular clothing stores. Right. I mean, cl skate clothes are very great material. Mm -hmm. I mean, they are a little pricey and I mean, shoes like, and decks. And yeah. Like, yeah. It's all heavy duty stuff. So yeah. it lasts. So, it yep. makes sense, and each city most likely has their own particular style in right. each one. Where yeah. did Anonymous move to? I think it's closed down. I think they might have closed down. Yeah, yeah. I thought yeah. they had closed, but yeah. uh, maybe they. I thought they had maybe changed. Anonymous the one that had the big ass fucking the big ass half pipe inside. Yeah. Inside, yeah, yeah. 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 That, that was cool. so rad. Dude. I was never a skater, but my brother was big and all that shit, and we'd always hit that skate shop up. It's yeah. the one that was down there in fucking uh, like the Western Hills, Price Hill, Coke yeah, Hill, right over by Bigs yeah. Yeah. Cemetery, yeah. you know. It's right across there, uh, but they do. I think there's like a, a car shop or something underneath there too. <laughs> yeah, but there back to back to your art though. When did you get started with doing like mural work and like working with cans of spray paint and stuff yep. like that? Uh, spray paint specifically, um, like uh, like in uh, probably like '94 ish. Um, <laughs> like getting into graffiti and stuff like high school era. So you've been um, doing this for as long as I've been alive, pretty much. Probably, basically. yeah, yeah, probably. Um, uh, how old are you? I'm 25. Okay. Yep. I bet I have. Yep. Um, uh, so yeah, spray paint those like started dabbling, like interested in graffiti, uh, like, um, <coughs> yeah, in the early nineties. And then, uh, like prior to that, like comic book stuff, you know, classic, cool comic book drawing stuff and then got into graffiti stuff. And then, uh, so basically like I would probably say 93, four, five interest in that total jackass 
toy shit like nothing good did um, you did you like steal paint from stores and shit like that this is a big like yeah thing allegedly for me. allegedly a lot of a lot of stealing from stores yeah right because yeah. it's so fucking expensive to get into doing graffiti work yeah. me and uh, my girlfriend were talking about this in the car ride up here like to learn how to be as good as you are with this shit this mm-hmm. takes fucking a, a fuckload of practice and either a fuckload of money or some big balls to walk right. into home depot or Lowe's right. or something right fucking load up a backpack and get the fuck out of there real right fast. yeah uh yeah there's like and i I know that there are still dudes like in the world of graffiti stuff. It like it's called racking, you know, just like racking is shoplifting, right? Yeah. And like, uh, yeah, like that's like one of the staples to the to the lifestyle, especially back in the day. Whereas nowadays, there's like all kinds of specialty paints. So I question how much how much a lot of people are still racking like that. Like it's really, I feel like it's really the only like real hard go getters that are still like running that. But that shit's expensive, is my thing. And these dudes right. that want to start doing this don't have money to do anything else. That's right. where it all comes from, right? It's yeah. Like... Um, yeah, it's that. It's an interesting thing. It's a weird thing. Uh, to be specific to that is what I think is funny is it. It is kind of like a a a poor man's sport. Uh, but at the same time, like. In terms of like, if there was like a science database, like of all the people that do graffiti, uh, it's probably lower middle, cl- upper lower class, lower middle class. Uh, so like, there's people with disposable income that probably could afford a, a probably half of the paint they'd like to have. Um, I, I don't think it's. T- I think I feel like truly poor people don't aren't driven to the trash shit. Uh, but like, if you're like just enough to have some disposable income, like you you have that like like fucking corny white teen angst type bullshit like not real angst like wannabe angst right uh, i feel like that's more the demo that truly saw a wu-tang does. video and yeah you got totally fucking, yeah yeah like, yeah that's yeah. me too man yeah 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 yeah, yeah they're only street I relate cultures. to the struggle yeah I yeah relate totally to Jesus yeah. So much. yeah living in mason watching bet talking about that life yeah it blows my mind how <laughs> dangerous like like i've seen tagging in some places or i'm just like how the fuck did they get there right so it yeah. seems dangerous as shit right uh yeah yeah um uh, yeah, shit does happen, um, and uh, yeah, there, there, there's definitely like a, a urban athleticism factor to some shots. Uh, Are you doing some parkour to get to right, the fucking yeah, building yeah, or to yeah, the ledge or yeah. something? It's like uh, yeah, city cross OG CrossFit. You know, it's like before there was CrossFit, there was graffiti writing. <laughs> and I'm sure you're using all the proper safety equipment, right? Oh yeah, Helmets three, three points of pe- contact, stay off the track, stay alive, totally. How, what, yeah. what, what, yeah. What's the riskiest <laughs> spot you've ever had to tag it? Uh, I mean, don't tell me the oh, location if yeah. you're not trying I'll, I'll to. T- I'll tell you a spot. I won't. Yeah, t- yeah not an address or whatever. But uh, one spot that comes to mind. In, uh, I lived in Seattle for a couple of years, and uh, there was one spot there that hasn't an, had an epic quality to it. It, it wasn't as dangerous as it looks because you can like walk. It's a, a stacked highway bridge. It's kind of like how here you'd have over the river with the stacked bridges. Right. Um, where under the lower deck of that bridge, there was like a an eight foot slab of concrete above the pillars, so you could walk up the off ramp. Uh, climb the service ladder down to the side and go on like the concrete underneath, and then and then there's pedestrians and waterways underneath where you could look up high and see that, and that that was a cool. I think that was probably one of my personal more like epic looking photogenic weird shots, but in terms of like legitimate dangerous, just like a, a two story building here in Cincinnati, um, now it's all refurbished and it's probably like I could forget what it's in there now, but uh, uh, at the time, the attached industrial sized garage had burnt down, so. When a friend of mine, we saw that the place was empty, we're like, well, we should go get that roof because it's, you know, it's empty these days. We climbed up a tree to get to the roof. We get on the roof to find out that it was a shell of a brick building that had burnt, burnt down. So the roof itself was just like embers, like big one, oh, one, one, by, one by one burnt. That's square. sketchy. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, uh, and we were inebriated enough. And uh, uh, so the, 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 the timbers were like uh, far enough apart that I could like like a wide middle stance like feet out where i'd have to i'd like straddle from wood to wood and like just do a whole letter as high as i could reach you know and then feet together get out other paint straddle out second letter so i did that like six times uh for each you know one for each letter and uh and then driving by on the highway you know weeks after that stuff it's like perfect spacing it looked fucking great but like from the highway you couldn't tell that that's like a shell of a building but that allowed it to run for like a year because to get up there and buff it, like they're like nobody's gonna fucking walk on burnt lumber and it's you know. So like, the the reason you want to get into these tough spots is that way it lasts longer. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Finding a burner spot is good because you, you, there's a lot of high profile spots, but you want a high profile spot that's gonna last as long as possible. You know. Uh, Tell uh, the uninitiated what buffing buffing means. Oh yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, buffing is like the classic. Like whenever a buff spot would be 
any spot that you see as a, a civilian driving by and you can tell graffiti was there. Like that's been buffed. So they roll what, it with what, like gray yeah, paint. And shit. Yeah. Whether it's pressure wash, gray paint. Yes. You know, X'd out by the city in some way. Uh, yeah, that's just like buffing. So, uh, you want to you want to try to make unbuffable spots, or just be a psychopath that paints so fucking much that if they doesn't matter if they're you know there's some usually like <laughs> 19, 20, 21 year old kids that are just gung ho, um, they might be painting so much that they might be getting three or four spots buffed a day, but they're painting five or six a night, so they're just you know little maniacs. out there like David Cho just destroying <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Man, that takes some serious passion. Did that you, is some serious art, artsy. So you were saying when you first got into this, 93, 94, 95? Yeah. Was it, uh, was it in like a crew sort of situation? Oh, uh, yeah. People that were painting? Yeah, uh, I grew up in Indianapolis, and uh, I had two friends, these Polish, bro- uh, these two brothers uh, that uh, had moved from Chicago to Indy, and they were 14, 15 at the time, I, as well as I was. And uh, But being that they were like, you know, uh, uh basically coming from like first gen immigrant parents, Chicago, Polish life. Uh, they had like a little more edge to them. So when they moved to Indy, they were about their like Chicago graffiti stuff. And, uh, I was into the comic book stuff and, and they were always telling me like, dude, you need to be painting graffiti like this shit. Like they love my drawings. And they're like, dude, you need to be painting this stuff. And, uh, uh, so yeah, I, I, I kind of started with those guys and they told me kind of the basic, uh, like the basic, you know, their basic philosophies on, on, you know, how you should go about it. And, and, uh, so they, they started me, you know, and then, uh, and then I just, you know, I went from Indy to Seattle to here and around this area and, and things. Uh, but yeah, just a, a, a very, for me, it was a, like a slow evolution because I, I, I was fairly independent. My, most of my, I mean, although I have, I, I'm a member of several crews and have been in several crews. Um, and they, they were, they were my first crew, uh, even though I've like gone through a couple iterations, uh, my, my personal journey is pretty independent. So some guys kind of start off good cause they just get brought up by a group of guys and they kind of just never, they never, they never pull bad moves. And, uh, you know, and, uh, so I had, I had like a, a, a many year progression of being a total jackass to getting a little better and being a little better. What do you, you mean know? by pulling bad moves? Pulling bad moves. Like, uh, um, like, uh, first of all, I understand if, if for like a listener factor, I know that graffiti isn't that hardcore or crazy. And I think it's funny when people think it's like, it's crazy, like hardcore thing. Cause there's like much hard, more hardcore things to like be involved in shootings and stuff. Um, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you could be like involved in like real gang robberies and stuff and like, you know, dealing drugs and shit. But, yeah. uh, um, so I, so I by no means claim that this is like a crazy hardcore lifestyle. Um, it's just crazier than nothing. But uh, uh, you get a lot of fucking trouble over it. I mean, you get yeah, caught you with certainly. stickers and paint. And yeah, like, and there's the different places have different penalties for sure. I, like when I was in Seattle, the time while I was out there, it was uh, such an up like a plague on the city. This is like ninety six to ninety nine type of era. Um, it was like s- such an issue that they had uh, mandatory minimum. So like any any defacement of anything was a year minimum. So. Um, what a, a year minimum county jail so it's like going to so literally <laughs> if, if it was on a cincinnati scale it'd be like going to the wendy's at hopple street and just doing a black line down the side of the drive through and if you got caught you're doing a year in county jail like I, I i met several people that were in jail like you know what what happened like oh i got popped i literally like that like an anarchist kid that was just writing on fast food places just on you know principle of anarchy fast food shit uh, so it might not be like whatever. I mean, maybe it's not gang shootings right, or selling right, drugs, right. but you'll go to fucking prison for it. Like, you you can if you do around. some crazy enough shit. That's for well, sure. Well, I think yeah. it's like I think it's crazy for the fact that you're going out there and just physically doing this artwork, just knowing you know, it's just like kind of a total rebellious kind of art, and I think that's it's really cool. Yeah. And I think that I think that's pretty crazy about it. you guys are going and attacking those really dangerous spots yeah. and beautiful pieces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, what I like about that factor of it is uh like how big how good how fast and how shitty of conditions so it's like you know you you might not have the most ideal pain it might not be the most ideal (laughs) setting you're in a you know crazy fucking environment and then you you still turn something out good meanwhile you have people that are trying to make good things in totally safe environments with everything handed to them and it's like still kind of questionable the quality of a product so like if you can turn something out that's fucking dope under terrible conditions like i think that that could say a lot to like maybe your uh 
future aptitude to doing good things with less than perfect situations. No, oh, yeah. I, I, I always wanted to know, is there a sort of level of respect between the professionals like you or like, like rookies? Like, is there ever like when you go to a, a spot that's often tagged yeah. and you're like, Oh, this is amazing. I can't tag over that. Right. Or is there just like, nope, I'm hitting it. Like, this place is awesome, no matter what. Right. Um, in Okay, so that would be like, I would say, a generational question. Because the reason I say that's a generational question is because I feel like the guys that I was raised by, the guys that I came up under, uh, a, a very standard philosophy from like 70s, 80s, 90s, early 2000s was basically you can't touch, don't touch it if you can't burn it. Like, if you can't do something better than what you're painting on, then just fucking don't fucking paint on it. Uh so that being said, you understand that if you just do like a tag, right, like just a hand style, a scribble, um, mm -hmm. if you're doing just like a hand style, you understand that somebody can do an outline over that. And doing that outline, you understand somebody can do a fill-in over that. And you understand that somebody can do a piece over that fill-in. And like, it's kind of like, you know, the calibers keep going up on that spot. And as long as you're, you're roasting what was underneath it, you know, no harm done. But the, the, uh, the, the bad the bad taste, the uh, stepping on toes comes to when you have something that is truly nice and then, and then you just do some garbage on it on some just like, just some dick move shit. Uh, that's like, a, you know, that's just like a provocation and that's like, that's like an attention grab. You know what I mean? It's just like, like it, it, that I would say that that's like not cool. Adding and, on and, to that, how did you, this is a story a couple of years back, but you know the Shepard Farrier piece that's yeah. down in uh, Good down topic. north side. Yeah. So the, the one dude hit it with some super toy, like awful looking garbage C Caper shit. and joist, I think, yeah. Okay, so I have a, I have a, I think I have a unique opinion on that one because I think it's hilarious that, uh, you know, the CAC paid for that, right? The C so this Contemporary Art Center um, flew in <laughs> Shepard Ferry and, and had him do his thing. And uh, Shepard Ferry, for the uh, people that don't know, is the guy that did the Obey sticker. He did the Hope campaign for Obama. He's yep. famous for a lot of other shit, but that might be where you guys would know him. For. Yep, Sorry, yep. Gotcha. Uh, um, yeah, uh, Andre has a posse. You know, all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Uh, so. What I think's hilarious is like back in the day when he was doing like Andre the Giant posters in San Francisco, I don't think San Francisco appreciated it. They're like, you know, what the fuck, this guy's trashing these properties in our municipality. Like, this is not a good, this is a scourge, this is a bad thing. Um, I think it's hilarious that like the Contemporary Art Center here in Cincinnati spends a bunch of money, flies in these artists to do these things. And then in that particular situation where Caper and Joyce did some stuff over the Shepherd Ferry thing, what I love about that story is. Um, I think it, it, it provokes a really smart conversation because you're flying in a criminal, somebody with a criminal past from a, some other city that they don't like. You know, I would assume they don't like it because it's fucking graffiti and people like their property values. They fly in someone else to, uh, you know, leg do legitimate stuff here. And then it gets gone over by actual citizens in the neighborhood, actual people that live there. So it's like this whole not my backyard shit. Uh, I love that that was like two local guys and they were basically on some like, you know, graffiti isn't done with permission. Like this is faux graffiti. And, uh, uh, I agree with that. Like there's things where, like, even when I do legal graffiti, I understand that I'm doing a painting that looks like graffiti, but like graffiti is illegal that just black and white. It has to be illegal. Like if it's not illegal, it's just a painting. Cause you're just using paint. Even if it's spray paint, it's fucking paint. Like, so in the modern era right now with the whole street art thing, it's like, Yes, that's a graffiti style thing, but like sanctioned by PNG, operated by an it's agency. Not graffiti fucking by definition. You know, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's fucking. If it's Ill, if it's not illegal, then it's a painting, even if it looks like graffiti. You know, uh, it's, it'd be like a professional wrestling versus like a street fight. Like like you could have a professional wrestling match based on street fight moves, but it's a fucking. You know what it is. You know what I mean? No, uh, that makes sense. I wanted to get to this um, to kind of tag onto that as well. This is a weird question to ask, and I understand if you can't really Dude. answer it honestly. But like, is how much, how much of the stuff that you do now is like graffiti versus like you're doing like murals that yep. have been sanctioned and commissioned or yep. whatever? Yeah, um, that's that's a cool thing about the modern era with the whole like street art embrace of the of that culture is people do like to have the element of graffiti related like they I, I think that there's a lot of people painting graffiti like commercial artwork um but the practitioners of the craft can recognize if that's just a person with a projector and some nice paint 
or if that or if like the styles techniques approach finished product references history like if it's like clearly the person doing this has some like legitimate street cred qualities um so for like the consumers the passers-by uh you know uh like you know any of these street art festivals they have in various cities like the passers-by everything's great everything's painted it's all new it's pretty it's got eyeballs i can see what it is it, i don't have to read it it's just a face or something like like people love that shit i've always said people you put eyeballs on it and it's a fucking legal as soon as you put eyeballs on something people are like not offended but if it's a questionable thing they have to read they feel challenged and they hate it but uh um uh you can t it's like the whole proof is in the pudding thing like you can tell by looking at things uh as a practitioner of it you can say oh that guy clearly is you know there's some there's some strong fundamentals there that are like rooted in like the truth of the of the thing um uh but the majority civilians could give two shits they just want it to look cool and pretty so if it looks pretty you know everybody's there you know it's all it's all fine and good but i think you know people that come from that real <coughs> that real background they want to see that i mean it'd be, it'd be like if you're like a, a music producer like whether you're you know punk metal hip-hop whatever like you can tell when this is some fucking new kid shit or if it's like fucking some wu-tang or some like street that shit makes complete sense. trap music yeah absolutely you know? once you fully understand what you're working with you can totally point out like the flaws yeah nuances yeah and like yeah. just things like i made i remember that i made that yeah. that mistake once before or right. something like that yeah yeah just even just weird design stuff like i mean we'll use visual examples uh that cincinnati thing that's that's my studio downtown um just like even though this is like basically just like a, a very clean um typeface uh the fact that just like the fact that i put those ends together i flip some letters around backwards just like weird little abstract decisions that like you know uh that's so cool <laughs> me and me and my guys love it because we think it's like interesting and fun but like i don't know what like a a DAP UC student would say if they'd be like, oh, the, the kerning on that T doesn't allow for the, the pikas of the da da da. Like, uh, I just want it to look cool. And like, my look cool decisions are just based on, you know, things that interest me and the things that I think are dynamic or appealing or attractive. Uh, you know, um, so like, you know, my decision making is coming from a different place than like a real critic. I want to get to, uh, these Holy as shit. well these up, are yeah. fucking insane these uh murals that you did where where is this at these, that's uh, uh storm looks dude yeah those are cutouts those are mdf cutouts um uh those are painted um those, it's an office called es properties in clifton they like rent to like college students in like the uh call in the uc campus area um so each one of these characters is a, you know each office worker's space so they picked they they each picked their characters oh that's awesome so in terms of uh, like workflow or even like in relation to that, there you go. There's some Who the fuck would pick Damien as Robin? Or was that your choice? <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Robin, uh, the funny thing about the Robin is that's the intern's desk. So like uh, <laughs> it's like the sidekick, you know? It's like the weakest character and it's the sidekick. That's clever. So, yeah. Uh, black dude, Black Panther. You know, the late empowered lady with the storm. The, the lady actually with the Hulk... Uh, uh, she's like, you know, uh, she's very fitness oriented. Uh, she's like the boss lady. She's, she's in charge. Uh, so, you know, each character kind of references, but I was going to say side note, uh, for the art side of things, you know, this office initially, they wanted me to do like a very graphic design, like picture, like printed wallpaper, uh, but painted, they wanted me to just do this cool graphic design wrapping around the whole space. Uh, and then as we pinned down that sealed that deal, Two days later, uh, you know, she hits me up. She's like, can I have the Hulk on mine? Like, you know, I know we're going to do this cool orange and gray graphic design, but can you throw a Hulk right in the middle of this shit right in front of my desk? And uh, I was like, well, that's, that doesn't really mesh well. And then this other lady said, I want to, you know, I want this character. And this guy said, I want a picture of this All truck. last minute. Yeah, it's also, it became this whole <laughs> change of direction. Uh, so, it, you know, and then I have to walk through with them and explain, like, okay, we can't, we can't have both of these things. You know, uh, if we want to do characters, let's have – we can't have three out of six of you wanting characters. No, wait, so, this is – is this printed on wall? Oh, no, it's painted. And no, those are all painted. Painted directly on the yeah. wall. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, well, it's painted on MDF, so a half-inch material that I jigsaw out, contour cut. Uh -huh. and, and, then, um, and then I use the scraps of those contour cuttings to make those other shards that look like it's busting out of the wall. So, like, some of them are screwed in. Uh, the okay. foreground. So. I was gonna say the dimension to it looks yeah. really cool. Yeah, 
So some is painted dimension and some is layers, like the tidbits. Um, and it's especially in this looks. area in, in the right shoulder, how you can see this shard going over his right shoulder, but then bam, the bigger piece is right. clearly closer. Yep, exactly. Yeah, just layering him up. Yeah. Probably one of the most frustrating things I'd say is being an artist is when you're working on something. <sighs> going back to what you said about them making those changes the last yeah. minute is yeah. Yeah. just completely changing everything you had planned and just thought of in your head, this every vision you had every time it happens all the yeah. time. Every yeah. time I, yeah. I've done art for someone, they've, yeah. they've like, can, can you just add this one last thing? Every conversation starts with just do whatever you want. And then like, as soon as you start coming up with something like I was thinking a little more, it's like, well, then exactly. you should have fucking told me that you were fucking thinking this. Cody, and you, then I'd start there. <laughs> Cody, you have a, you have a pretty good story about a drawing you did and it was like the same thing and they were just paying you for that or whatever it was. Do you remember that? I don't know. I've had so many. I've stopped selling art and posting art because I've just decided <laughs> that art's for me. Like I don't want to do it for other people anymore. Yeah. It just drives me fucking psychotic. I don't want to do it. Like because it's exactly what you said. They'd be like, "Hey, I like your art." I'm like, "Cool, you like my art? Yeah, I want to buy some art." Like you want to buy some art, even better. And they're like, "Just do whatever you want." And I, but uh, here's this uh, painting that fucking Salvador Dali already made, like a hundred whatever eighty years ago. Can you repaint that exact thing for me? And I'm like, just buy a print of his shit. I'm not yeah. doing some other dude's shit. And they'd be like, I want a cat, but like, do it your way. But don't do it your way. I want it to look exactly like the cat. And I'm like, I don't do photorealism. It's not my thing. I'm an illustrator. Oh, that's cool. Well, um, I guess we're not going to be able to make a deal. And I'm like, I thought you said you liked my fucking art. Yeah, like, right. And it's it's always that. And then they're like, after you get done doing a fuckload of work, like you agree to a price, then they fucking half the price right at the end. They're like, I yeah. can't afford it. I was just about to say Art's that. no one's priority. Right. No one's got the... F so I'm just like, unless it's a fucking business with a steady source of income, I'm not doing art for right. like individual buyers. And, it, and it's few and far between on those. Because it, it, I, I compare that element, what you're talking about there, uh, to like with like tattooing where like you know just, yeah. as, as a t if you're a tattooer like you'll be in your shop and somebody will come in and be like uh you know i want a sleeve it's like well of course you want a sleeve you know and then what do you want like i want a phone for my grandma and a bird for my grandpa and a, and a japanese fish and a dragon and uh you know and they start rattling off all the shit they want and they're like i got 80 bucks and i want to <laughs> yeah. and i want to yeah, exactly. and and do it today that actually and it's happened like, to me recently I, I guarantee it yeah but it's the same thing it's these people like they want the fucking moon and they're like oh but the thing is we just built this place so we're out of money but it's like motherfucker. Like, did you tell the drywall guys you're out of money and the concrete guys you're out of money, or no, is it just you, me that who puts the final fucking polish on this place that just can just go fuck himself? Right. Exactly. <laughs> There's this guy that hit me up the other day and he was like, "I want a whole Sonic sleeve done, and I'll toss you twenty bucks for it." I was like, "What? What the fuck are you talking about?" Yeah, it's a, it's yeah. just it's crazy. Yeah, 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 exactly everything what you guys said. I'll write back to your next message for twenty dollars. How about that? <laughs> yeah, consider responding we'll to you for twenty dollars. <laughs> for twenty dollars. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude, that shit drives me fucking psychotic. That's why I'm just like, I, I it takes a lot of the drive out of it. I feel like no, I I just don't do art for other people. I just like yeah. might paint something for her or whatever. But like other than that, nah, it's from like I'm just painting because I like to paint or I like to draw stuff. You yeah, know what I mean. Mm -hmm. That yeah. makes complete sense. But yeah, dude, this shit's insane. I've I've tried like tried and tried and fucking tried and tried again to paint with like cans, and it's yeah. just goddamn impossible. Like yeah. I, I don't know how you ever get to a point where like you start painting on something and you figure out the right tips. It's like yeah. anything well, I'm sure Cody, practice. But you have to be talented. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> That's fair, Luke. Uh, you may you may have just solved the uh, entire thing. I feel like a uh, graffiti requires a whole lot of like math. <laughs> I call it, it paint math. Yeah, paint math. I, I call a lot of my, uh, my <laughs> like my decisions. I call them paint. I call them paint math. Like when you're sitting there doing all the <laughs> plus minus push pull up and down left and right stuff. I call it paint math. How you're kind of juggling all the elements. Uh, yeah, I, I absolutely call it paint math. There is a, a science to that. Yeah, I but, bet it takes a lot of time to fucking master that shit. And I'm sure that like an academic artist would be able to break that down to you real well. Uh, because like, I I feel like it's. In like the academic side of thing, everybody knows about like, you know, Fibonacci ratios and golden ratios and the golden mean and all those types of things. Um, but those things are like scientific terms for intuitive, natural things. So it's like those are things that just exist that we gave a fancy name to, but like we recognize that whole two thirds and, and things like that. Uh, there, those it, it, those are intuitive. So like, it, a lot of decisions you make might be based on that naturally you know i feel like you because like you do something and you say oh it looks a little weird and it just so happens the way you adjust that is like oh that the way i moved that line over there turns out that's going from like one third to you know whatever and like so if and if you could you could i think you could academically break that down uh but 
it just it also could just come from like natural refinement you know uh, does that make sense? No, that makes complete or sense. Cool. Absolutely. Or I feel like it would have to be a lot about just angles and right. just like uh, degrees. And yep. yeah, I, I I feel like it takes a lot of fucking yeah. skill. I, has, to- I totally call that paint math. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. I like the way you say that. Yeah. yeah. Has the improvements in technology helped you do art faster and better and more efficiently? Um, yep. Um, and, and that's another thing where I have this bitter old man view on stuff because yes, technology is fucking awesome and I embrace the hell out of it. Um, but what I, what I don't like and, and younger, I don't know about younger folks, but less experienced folks, um, I think take it the wrong way when I explain, like, I don't think you should jump straight to this. Like if you jump straight to like the embracing of the technology, uh, for example, like Adobe Illustrator or iPad Pro, uh, you know, uh, what is that? Uh, Pro, Procreate. Pro, Pro Procreate. Procreate. Yeah, yeah. So like, like Procreate or like, or like the mo- most fancy CS package Adobe offers. Yeah, you make beautiful stuff. And like modern working illustrators and designers are making great stuff. But if you actually know how to illustrate and then you learn Illustrator, you will be a fucking fanatically good Adobe Illustrator. Um, and there are perfectly great functioning people that only know how to do digital shit. But if you give them like a pencil, triangle, I don't a, know a compass, they, they'd be like, ah, oh, you know, if I could just put, if I could just scan this and put this in, I could really bring this thing together. But like, if you could make it fucking tight as shit in what I call Illustrator, 1.0 just fucking be an illustrator like if you actually know how to use multiple types of brushes when you use your digital version of that brush it'll be used in the way the designer of the brush intended it to be used you know you need you need to to know application before you start theorizing you can theorize right. all day you can think about and doodle up ideas on, on the pad but you right. have to know how to actually apply it yeah to the wall yeah yeah that's yeah. well put yeah yeah, well, I, it's just it's easier to kind of fake shit with the digital thing. It's right. easier, to, and what he's saying is like if you it's can like make something illusion. super, yeah, yeah, like fake versus synthesize. So you mm-hmm. could fake it if you're only digital, but you could synthesize it if you can do analog and digital. You yep. know, you can make some really fucking cool shit if you have the understanding of both. Uh, right. Shout out to a local artist, uh, Bobby Bronson, on Facebook or whatever he does. Oh yeah, really tight, fantastic fucking, work. Cool. He's good at both sides of this sort of thing. He's he's doing like these crazy fucking paintings that are like ink paintings, like these uh, samurai warriors and koi fish and all that shit. And then he's doing cool. like a digital art where it would seem like he shows his time lapse videos of making it on the digital art side of things, yeah. where you would assume he's doing these people's. Uh, I'd, it'd be easier for me to pull it up here. I'll pull up uh, Allie's picture. And like Her. you're saying, his his actual foundation is traditional mediums. So yeah. then his digital shit's on point. Right. And he makes stuff like that where yeah. it's, it's easy enough to sit there and take a picture right. on these uh, programs and trace over it. And that's it. But he doesn't do that. You, right. you see the time lapse of him. He has a photo in the corner and he uses his actual portrait skills to sit there and yeah. put that together. And I think that's more what he's saying. Like it. He's got the ability to do portrait shit and an understanding okay. of that. Whereas, like, what the digital thing allows you to do is put a layer down, and then you could trace over that layer and then delete that layer, and then it looks like you just drew that. Yeah, and you could, like, auto-trace it or, or do any kind of effect that could make it cool. But, yeah, the, the, having that real foundation, like, just... But you yeah. have, like, everything available to you when you have these Procreate <laughs> items and these right. online items. But when you're, like, working with a specific medium, like, let's say, with your physical hand, yeah. you all have to work with what you got. And you also have, like, different pressure senses and stuff that you can put on this stuff, different kinds of shading. Yeah. There's just definitely a huge difference between the real stuff and then the actual digital stuff. Yeah, I think in terms of, like, uh, here we're talking about digital versus analog art. Uh, I think when uh, when you're working with your hand and take it back to the spray paint factor... I think the big thing that troubles people when they're dealing with like spraying paint is, you know, when you use a marker or a pencil, um, you know, you're, you're dragging that, you're, you're relying on that friction for your pressure. You can feel it. Um, you can feel like the tooth of the paper and stuff. Whereas uh, spray paint, airbrush paint sprayers, those kind of options, um, there's a 360 factor because you have, you might have the pressure control of the spray, um, but then you also have the, the depth from, from the surface to the, you know, source. Uh, so you have like, you have a range, you have, you have the pressure range and the uh, perspective range of the, so, so there's a, a body mechanic factor, you know? Uh, I, I think that's probably the hardest thing for people to grab when they like jump to spray paint uh, is, is like, oh shit, I never thought about how far away I was from something. You and know, the like, paint drips because everything's vertical all the time. Right, yeah, exactly, right. Yeah, th- and that's totally because of how much pressure you're dealing with. 
Um, yeah, totally. Yeah. And like staying with crisp, clean lines that are hard to fucking like yep. if you fuck them up, but like on that right. last little layer, you've just right. ruined everything. Right. Yeah, exactly. And that's like a speed issue. So, you know, you might go too fast and not get enough, or you might go too slow and get a bunch of those drips. So you have to like understand that speed, but then also understand the, the depth of where you're at as in terms of how close to the surface you are for like the width of that line. So you have like the, the width factor and then like the pressure flu flow factor. <laughs> I'm yeah. sure you're still learning things like any artist constantly every day. So to say that like you're at any like master level to any artist, right. I feel like is just like comping out to what you could eventually do. But right. you're obviously super fucking talented, like a phenomenal, like high level artist. Thanks, man. How long do you feel like you had to do that before you got to like this level? But right. Obviously, you're still growing. Yeah. Good question. Um, I bet I would say probably. So if I started, I, I, I like, I, you know, I think I started when I was around 14. So. Uh, I'm trying to think time-wise in terms of that answer. Uh, if I started at four, 14, it was like, be like 93, 94. Uh, so I, I really feel like I was competent, not good or great, but I think I was competent or probably around 05. Uh, so that's like 10 years. That's like 10 years of like, you're talking about like stealing and passion and going out there and doing stuff. Uh, and how that, much time are you committing to this every a week? fucking lot, dude? When I when I uh, um, this is all pre-internet, man. You know, like this is back when doing shit in the world mattered. Uh, so like th when I lived in Seattle, especially, there was like two years straight where I pretty I was probably walking like five to ten miles a day. You know, like we're walking and writing on shit, walking all day, g gathering. I'm air quoting here, uh, gathering materials in the daytime and using those materials at night. And, uh, um, and this is seven days a week that you're doing this. Yeah, dude. And like, uh, Fuck. like, uh, selling art supplies, you know, uh, to get by. Um, and, uh, like markers, like 120 Prisma sets, the, pr the pr pencils, the markers, brushes, paint pens, uh, um, polo shirts, um, acqu acquiring, Interesting. you know, acquiring like, uh, the, 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 the front table at a Nordstrom store's worth of polo shirts and getting on a bus and they then fell off a truck somewhere. They fell off the truck right on the bus too much and oh, uh, okay. um, and then like so, you know in black ones with the red fucking horse on them and in right. a Starbucks city that's like perfect Starbucks swag. Uh, so like uh, you know uh, that was a good way to like get over for a while. Um, but like literally, I, I there was a time in terms of like putting in time. I think my most prolific run of constant effort so in terms of more quality than quantity uh was i would walk like every fucking night um like i would take a bus across the city walk all the way back to the opposite corner of the city where i live and uh like in comparison here it'd be like going to um like kenwood and walking back to like covington you know what i mean like just just hoof it and uh uh but there was a time though for the, the like the metro downtown area um, I wanted to have my name on each block twice in each direction. So like if you're a pedestrian or on a bike, I want you to like, as you're going down the block, whether it's a parking meter or a newspaper box or whatever, I wanted to make sure you'd see me twice on that block that way. And if you're going that way, you'd see it twice that way. And I wanted to have every street and every, gr you know, every part of the grid twice on each block in each direction. So that, you were, that was my manifesto of like 98. So you were <laughs> straight up that thing that you were talking about where they might be buffing you three to four times a day, but you're right. putting up fucking right. six to ten pieces a night, so it doesn't even and, matter. And I mean, even just scribbles and, and like big fat cap tags, little pen tags, like scribes in glass, whatever, just to just, just, just do as much as possible. Uh, um, way more quality than quantity. When you get these large paintings um, you do... Quantity than quality. Yeah, when you get these large pieces done out there and you see it get buffed or just taken off, what do you feel like? Um, that is good training for what I do now. Um, uh, emotions out the fucking window. Um, uh, you know, you learn. So in terms of like from 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 back then to right now, uh, back then when I when I was terrible, I'd be very proud of something I painted, and then you know a couple old school dudes would show up that had been doing it for twenty years, and they'd paint right over us the next day, and I'd be like, hey man, we just paint, we just spent a week painting that man, you know, and then they'd be like, well, I hope you got your flicks, you know, because our shit's tight and your shit's not. And then it's like, there's nothing you can Is there a lot of competitiveness? Fuck I feel like yeah. I really want to talk about that Fuck because yeah. I've been wanting to ask yeah. you about this yeah. ever since we yeah. started. In, in the days of now, how masculinity is the fucking villain of the fucking world. Uh, yeah, there was definitely a time when masculinity uh, was the villain against other masculinity. <laughs> did, do you, did, did you ever, uh, do you have like an arch nemesis? 
Uh, they'd probably like to think so. I like to say, uh, <laughs> uh, like, I, so when you, you, you get that much credit, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. I like to say I don't, I don't hate anybody. I have, I think I have haters, but I don't hate anybody. Uh, um, uh, Who's your hater? Name drop him on the uh, back. Yeah, list. right. <laughs> I forget his name oh, um, shit. Uh, <laughs> or her name. I don't know who it could be. It must but be uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, hardly. But uh, <laughs> oh. no, no. You know what's funny? I gotta about hear that? some stories. You know what's funny about telling jokes like that is like. Uh, if I have an image in my head of any guy or girl in the world that I could be thinking of, there could be 20 other ones that are like, that motherfucker's talking about me. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> it's, like, yeah. it's like, please. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have some yeah. stories? Like, why, why is this person um, your nemesis? Um, I really don't think I have any nemesis. I, I really think, I, I really, really don't. Um, I, I, like, uh, I, 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 I care too much about like psychology to like give a lot of credit to like, like, no, that makes okay. sense. like, uh, like don't give them the time of the day. Right. It's like, uh, validation, like, uh, like a conversation requires two parties. So if you just have one fucking madman at a bus stop screaming at everybody, like it's only the person that stops by and talks to him is in that conversation. Like there's tons of fucking dudes screaming at bus stops, you know, like who fucking cares? Like that's all fine. And Danny, Danny, uh, Danny, but tell us a story of a yeah, fist fight. Okay. Okay. So like, what are the competitive? What do you mean competitive? I'll I want to know how fun. One, yeah, one of is. my one of my favorite fight stories that I was uh, a party to um, was uh, I'm gonna take this back to the Seattle days is uh, uh, so it'd be like '97. Um, uh, uh, my friend Brady, uh, he was like a street kid. He like kind of grew up on the street. Uh, at the time, he was probably like 16 or 17. I was well, I guess I was probably 17, so he was probably like 15. And uh, we were talking about like fight techniques and martial arts and all kinds of shit. And like, uh, and I, you know, I respect the fact that this kid, this kid went to juvenile a bunch of times. He's got all these problems with like these like legit street gangs in Seattle. And, uh, it's like, he was a member of like a pretty physical graffiti crew, but he had legitimate beef with like these guys that just kind of rolled around the city buses and just held down the street and just, he was, you know, had beef with like some legitimate little young gangbangers. And, uh, he came over to my house one night and, uh, it was like 1130, um, I didn't plan on going out anywhere. I was I was casual, and uh, uh, and he's like, you know, he's like, will you walk with me down here to to you know Westlake to I get on my bus? And I was Sounds like, no. like trouble. Uh, yeah, exactly. And uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> so I, I just put on my cape and hop in the phone booth. Uh, uh, he, uh, my arch nemesis. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was his arch nemesis, and he's like, he's like, he's like, I you know I I always see these dudes down there. Like I don't want to you know have a, get jumped by these dudes. You come with me, and I'm like, oh shit, be great. I'm gonna have to go. I'm about to, no, I'm about uh, yeah. to get jumped. Yeah, with yeah, you I'm by about to get dudes. stabbed by a bunch All of right, fucking come along. Asian gangbangers or some shit. And uh, <laughs> so, like, uh, yeah, I walked with him down there, and uh, and uh, I was super impressed. It was like one of the most. It was more, even though we were all like teens and high teens. It was one of the most mature fight scenes I ever seen compared to even like in my 20s and 30s, like just like seeing people fight. Uh, I I really liked the maturity factor, even though he was younger than me. Um, you know, as we're, as we're walking, as we're approaching, I see a group of like four dudes, you know, coming from the spot. It's like the skate spot. It's like the, everybody's sitting where in the daytime, everybody does grinds on that piece of concrete. And, uh, and these guys stand up off the skate spot and start walking towards us. And they're so casual and he's so casual. I don't realize this is the problem. This is the beef. It's about to happen right now. I had no idea. And, uh, I just thought it was four dudes standing up from the skate spot. And, um, uh, as we're walking up. You know, Brady kind of nods at this dude, and this dude, you know, steps out in front of them and is nodding back at him. And they kind of just exchange, you know, acknowledge each other, like you know, silently, "What's up? What's up?" And uh, uh, as they, they, as we, I think we're about to walk past him, but it turns out it's a circle factor, you know. So then, so they start doing the half circle thing, and I'm like, "Oh shit, it's fucking going down here." And uh, as soon as it fucking starts, it's pretty much over because uh, uh, they do the little half circle posture and thing. Dude swings, Brady counters. Dirty boxes, hit them a couple more times, drop just, you know, dirty boxes, guy face down. And uh, instead of, like, capitalizing, jumping in, going for more than more than what's necessary, again, I respect the maturity of this whole situation, he pop, 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 and drops the dude. And uh, dude's laying on the ground, like, halfway out, and Brady just kind of leans over, puts his hand on his back, and he's like, I'm sorry, man, I'm just smarter than you. 
And uh, I was ah, like, fuck, damn. that's cold. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, like, I, like I, I, that was like 22 years ago. And I still remember like, damn, that was a cold ass line. Like, like just telling the dude that's sleeping, like, dude, I'm sorry, man. Like, that was fucking nice. Just I like so that. That's awful. good. Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah. I like that one. Uh, but that like, was his arch nemesis. He was ready yeah, for that. that. He was probably pr- practicing that in the mirror. Totally. Like, one yeah. day I'm going to fight you. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm just going to say Drinking this. milk and curling books. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> what's, the, what's the gnarliest situation you've been into while painting? Or just if you have a fucking yeah. crazy story you, that you want to drop on You said you've seen us. all kinds of fights. <laughs> I like. I want to hear I want to hear all the or juicy shit. Right? Running from the police. I'm sure there's been some territory fights, right? You've been doing this for 25 years. I know you got some stories for us. Uh, let me think about uh, something we can air. Uh, <laughs> um, um, I'll tell you a funny story. This is a uh, this is a fairly recent story. This can I tell s- just a, a, a cool like yeah. a week ago? A- antic- kinda? Yeah, any, pretty, pretty re- this any this story can be hypothetical. This, this, this isn't yeah. th- this isn't necessarily me, but this is recent. A friend relevant. Of yeah, a friend of mine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so recently, um, there was a spot here in town where these two guys wanted to paint it. it it gets painted fairly regularly it's decent high profile spot and uh uh again like i said you know bigger better always like everything as long as something's better than the last thing it's like not a not a graffiti politic issue so these guys go to like update this particular they painted it before someone else painted it recently and then they went to go do it again and it was like n- not a not a graffiti beef issue um this is just a fucking great story and like this is one of the craziest stories i ever heard and it just happened recently to some guys um fucking uh they're painting this spot. It's like four in the morning. Some people pull up, uh, honking a horn. They're up in the air somewhere. And uh, people pull up and they're honking the horn. And they're like, get the fuck down here. We're going to start shooting, you know? And they're like screaming like this, like uh, very like police-like jargon. And uh, so they're thinking these these must be cops thinking that well, we must have set off like a, a burglar alarm of some sort or something. And uh, uh, so they scatter from painting thinking that there's police down there that are chasing them. And then uh, uh, um, they get, they're getting down. These guys pull a car up on them. Turns out it's just like some street thug type dudes that are just like hassling them. Uh, they end up, fuck, I don't know if I should tell that story. Hypothetically. Uh, Dude, this yeah. isn't about friend you. you. Yeah, no, it's, this it's, is your it's friend. Not, it's not about me, yeah. Uh, An ex-friend. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, I'm talking to, no, this is oh, real friend. People, it's actually this fiction story I'm writing. That's uh, what I'm saying. Yeah. Fucking, yeah. Uh, uh, but these guys pull this car up, so they thought the cops were busted them and they were going to scatter. As they're scattering, this car pulls up on them, and uh, it's just some fucking white trash shitheads. And uh, um, they're hassling one of the guys. They get a hold of him, uh, like basically take his wallet photos of his id or like they were claiming that this is their building and that they're gonna uh you know uh get whatever they can out of them to recoup this damage uh they end up running them around and taking money out of his bank right like go and like max out your stuff and uh right so then so then he uh after it happened he calls a friend of his and is like this just happened and what this guy's like fuck that and uh so he starts calling people to find out if he can find out by the way these guys operated, they might be some people. And he's like, let me see if I can find somebody that would know somebody that would do something like that. And then uh, end up like identifying these dudes <laughs> and then going back the next day with some other guys and getting all their money stuff back. And then the guys were able to go finish their spot. This uh, uh, <laughs> going to be a really good story in your book. Yeah. Yeah, totally. I'm, I'm trying to <laughs> illustrate it and stuff. It's like fantasy <laughs> stuff. It'll um, be a really good story for your next mural or comic book. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Are you familiar with this? I did a comic book. Uh, I should have brought it with me. I only have like two copies of it. I was actually bring it. What is it? Uh, it's called Tell Modern. Me. It's called Modern Urban Legends. Uh, a friend of mine in Chicago, uh, uh, he wrote it and he had me draw it. And my friend of mine colored it. Um, yeah, Modern Urban Legends comic book. Do that. Um, but the goal for that, it kind of, we did one. I think somebody else did a second. I think he had somebody else do a second one. That's not it. Um, uh, go to, uh, the creepy pasta go to, go to, um, oh, there you go. Top left right there. Um, um, you drew all this. Yeah, I drew it. A friend of mine colored it. A friend of mine wrote it. Um, so my, my guy in Chicago, uh, is like an old Spanish graffiti writer and has like a really deep crew up there. And so this book is a really good way to tell stories without being a particular person. So the goal of the book uh, was, um, you know, 
if you have some crazy story, say you say somebody's painting a, a subway train in Spain, um, you know, 10 years ago, um, uh, they could tell the story through this character's eyes and in this character's city settings. So like, so it's like this crazy event happened, but it would happen to this guy. So it wouldn't, so you could have all these wild stories told by various people. Uh, that was the, that was the intent. So it's something I've, I just started reading comics actually the past like week. Mar yeah. I, I'm, uh, Deadpool kills the Marvel universe in the infinity gauntlet. I, I just picked them up cause I was like, I really like Marvel and want to check it out. And I think yeah. it's crazy that there's people out there that, do the sketches and then they do the color. There's another person who does the coloring. Why not right. both? Why can't I'm, I'm just curious. Right. Maybe it's right. shading. It's kind of an ignorant I wonder, question. I feel like do they still do that stuff? Uh, do they still do that stuff these days? Um, I'll get a big cartel. It must be their little store. Um, I don't think I put that up. I think it's theirs. Um, but um, so wait, uh, do you also go by Gamble? Yeah, Danny Gamble's like my Instagram. Oh, okay, yep, cool. Yep. Shout out. Word, word, word. Shout uh, out. Uh, um, yeah, Danny underscore Gamble. Um, so the person that sketches and someone that colors. Yeah, that was definitely the old school method. I wonder if these days, I like, I f there's a couple guys I follow online that are like old school gr uh, comic book guys that uh, I've always known them to be pencilers and inkers, and now it seems like they do their own colors. But that's probably because you can pencil and ink something and digitally color it pretty pretty quick. Yeah, um, that's my, that was gonna be my next question. How yeah. long does it take to come out with a comic? It took us a long time on that one for sure. Um, I was getting over a knee surgery on that, so that was cool because that was like you know six weeks of being able to sit in one place and draw it. Uh, if I if I didn't have knee surgery at that time, I don't think I would have ever been able to sit still for that long to do that these days. You know. Yeah, that um, makes sense. That's so cool. You got that on your bucket list, though. Right. Like exactly. A fucking comic book. Right. Dude. Right. Exactly. I agree. It's totally a bucket list thing. Like I could give two shits if, if it sold. I could give two shits if I made any money just on an it. Just an accomplishment. I, yeah, just like I did it. it. Right. Yeah. I did it. Right. That yeah. brings me to uh, the as far as spending so much time making these things what do you do to keep yourself entertained while you're doing that podcast out the ass dude i podcast all day like i i like predicting dude i listen to so many podcasts and like music wise like um i just like i pretty much just don't listen to fucking music like if i listen to music it's pretty much in a podcast form where it's like here's the you know here's the 20 new artists of the week and i listen to that and that's i don't like that makes sense like i get so sucked into these podcasts sometimes i so my last year <laughs> I, I probably listened to the most podcasts i've ever listened to yeah and i was looking at my spotify and it showed me all the music i listened to over the year and i'm like i wonder how like it told me like twenty nine thousand hours or something of music and i was like i wonder how many fucking hours podcast was because i listened to way more of that shit yeah for yeah. sure. Yeah, I, I listen to a lot of podcasts because I'll, I'll drive. Like if I do a like a job in like Nashville or Orlando, Atlanta, uh, Charlotte, Chicago, you know, if I'm driving, if it's not a podcast, it's audio book, you know, and it's like I, I've never been a reader, but I love information. So I'll, I'll audio book some, some deep science shit and then come back with a bunch of neuroscience, psychology, behavioral <laughs> mechanism knowledge and it's just start dropping shit on people. <laughs> like, shit that you'll yeah. never need to know fucking yeah. ever. Right, like, right, I do right, shit yeah. like that just getting yeah. rabbit holes about yeah. fucking neurosurgery and then now I know Dude, 10 things yeah. about neurosurgery that no one else, that I never need to know because right, I'm not yeah. going to be nobody's fucking brain surgeon. Right, yeah, it's awesome <laughs> shit though, man. Robert Sapolsky. That, that's that's the man yeah dude you ever listen to dan carlin's hardcore history yep yep totally those yep, are ones yep. that you gotta like listen to an hour and a half of and yep. sit down and be like hold on yep. let me pause that shit and yeah. listen to something funny <laughs> yeah. God yeah, damn yeah, it. Yeah, so <laughs> totally. yeah yeah you said you had a funny story about ari the ari's podcast oh yeah or yeah something. uh yeah we were talking podcast earlier uh probably a year and a half ago uh you know you know how him and him and Bert and Tom and them will all talk shit on each other. They'll act like, they, fat, they'll yeah. act like they don't. They'll act like they don't get along and shit. So yeah, yeah, over racist, and all that shit. Uh, Welcher, all those kind of things. Uh, so like they'll be roasting each other on some shit. And one time, uh, in one of Ari's rants where he always calls Bert fake names, you know, Bert, Bert, Bert Brett, Chrysler, yeah, totally, yeah. <laughs> so he mentioned Brett Chrislop one day on his podcast, and he's like, uh, I think it was probably. It was around the time when they were talking about record thieving, and uh, and it was like the original welching on the bet time too. And uh, um, he mentioned Brett Chrislop as a shout out, like you guys need to fucking get on there and fucking talk to tell Brett that he's a fucking up, like get him at it, get at him at Brett Chrislop. So I was like, oh, what the fuck is Brett Chrislop? Let me see if that's a thing, right? And it was not. So I was like, I wonder if that could be a thing, and I could. And as soon as I like tried just to see, just to test to see if it was an available name, as soon as it, I clicked yes to like. 
like, what if I made this a name? It was like, followed you, followed you, followed you, followed you. So like, I'm like, fuck, I'm gonna let this shit run. <laughs> oh, that's so like, dope. Uh, uh, oh, wow. cause it was a bunch of other people like me, like looking like, is that a real thing? And it just so happened. And I grabbed it up before it was. And, uh, yes. uh, so just, just, just ping, 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 ping. Right. Did and you uh, start putting out fake tweets. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. like, uh, <laughs> so like, uh, so I made this whole fucking account where it's like the first picture is a picture of, of uh, I, did, I actually swapped it up now. See if you can, you might be able to come up with it though, even though I've changed the name now. How do you spell uh, it? Uh, yeah, you got, you got it spelled exactly right. Uh, it was an Instagram page. I wonder if it'll come up. I've changed the name a couple times since that. Um, That's so fucking I, I funny. I just wiped it recently. I can. I can he ever, show you what it he, is did now. he ever reach oh, out to shit. you? I don't know. Uh, no. Um, that one right there. But nope. Um, one T. But uh, uh, I I did I did talk to uh, Bert at Funny Bone. Um, I mentioned it to him. I was like, hey man, like uh, you know, I understand if you don't want me to do this. Like honestly, you can have it. Here's the password. You can have it if you want it. And uh, he's like, nah, man. He's like, have fun with it. I don't care. But uh. But yeah, I, I've got like 2,100 followers on that thing. Oh, that's yeah. fucking awesome, yeah. dude. Um, and I was posting like, what's really, what's really fucking my favorite part about it was, uh, uh, so initially I put a couple pictures up of, uh, of, uh, uh, Kreischer and his wife, like on the beach. Like if it's actually his page and it's just him, cause you know, successful people don't use social media. So it would make sense for a famous person to have one or two photos. Right. So yeah. I just put a two basic ass family photos on there and people are comment and shit oh dude you got rid of it though it was it says 2200 followers but whenever you click on it the shit's just gone word yeah i switched up the title or the name of it but yeah that's that it's the page um right now i'm kind of just sitting on it as an alter uh page because if i I don't know if i want to do a podcast or not i I actually gave it to a friend of mine uh a local stand-up comic where i was like dude like you got a podcast like i know he got locked out of his so i I tried to give it to him but i feel like he didn't make use of it so i just changed the name back to right so it's just like a blank comedy podcast related account because all the all the followers are people that come from podcast world who's your local comedian friend shout them out uh well that i was passing it off to andrew rudick who has a podcast puzzle buddies um and then rand barnaclo has rumble lips if you're familiar with that one um uh like I, I like to go and follow like all the local comics and just like watch them do their thing and you know go go to watch all the mics and shit you a fan of jeff tate at all yeah yeah just watched him this past weekend sunday show I missed it go dude bananas. i wish i would have fucking went so but i've seen yeah. him like five or six times before he's yeah. a fucking solid he's a funny comedian. dude uh yeah he's a funny dude i always see him when i go to uh kenwood town center i have a 12 year old daughter and uh so i take her there to get clothes and stuff so like it, dude it's fucking nuts like every time I go to Kenwood, <laughs> we'll be walking in there, heading to the stores that she goes to, and fucking there's Tate again. And like after like two or three times, like it's just funny now because now we'll just be walk crisscrossing through the stores, like what's up, dude? Like what? Up? Like uh, <laughs> like just like there's that dude I always see at the mall, and it's like I don't go to the mall. A lot. Is he by chance eating hot dogs and drinking red Gatorade? Um, I I I, I he's oh. usually not carrying food. Uh, <laughs> the reason I ask is because uh you know are you familiar with your mom's house? Yeah yeah. So uh Christina Pajitsky was always has a story about. When Jeff Tate stayed on their couch, he would just fucking, he survived off a of gas station hot dogs okay. for an entire week, and he had a permanent red ring around his mouth, because <laughs> yeah. all he would drink is <laughs> yeah. fucking red Gatorade. That's funny. That's, <laughs> that's funny. So, funny. so yeah. they had a whole hot dogs and Gatorade thing. I'm sorry. I thought <laughs> no, that that's too. awesome, man. I'm actually surprised that, uh, again, like I said, I just love I just love going out and supporting local comedy shit, and uh, uh, I was surprised that there wasn't more people there on Sunday. I think it sold out Friday and Saturday. But I was surprised the the Sunday show wasn't wasn't more heavily attended this past weekend, um, just because I feel like he's like, you know, in terms of like notoriety, I think he's probably one of the more, you know, expansive audience having local guys. Hundred percent. You know, is there any like local guy? I mean, I just got into this local comedy scene myself. I didn't even know that there was really much of one at all, which kind of blows my mind how big it is. Yeah. Uh, but like, I just know Jay Armstrong and I know a couple people that do stand up and stuff. Like who's some really popular local ones that you would recommend to someone that's never heard of local um, comedians. Uh, cause I know I'm curious. I would, I would, I would consider that, uh, the disclaimer on this is that, uh, I would consider myself like a, 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 a fan. Right. So like, uh, so it's kind of like as much as I shit on critics, um, I value my own opinion as that of a critic because I'm just a person who watches and has opinions about yeah. what other people do. Uh, but uh, I think there's a fucking good squad. Like it's like it's like a whole crew of locals. Um, uh, Josh O'Neill, um, uh, what's what's homegirl's name? Molly Hartzell, uh, Lee Krimble, um, Andrew Rudick, Ran Barnaclo. Uh, that whole team, man. Um, and there's like different ranges. Muhammad Patel, um, uh, Grant Styles. Grant's fucking awesome. He's like a uh, really young dude. I don't know exactly what his age is, but he's like, you know, 
and I, I I'm super impressed by like how young he is and how like fucking smart and hilarious he is because he's just like genuinely fucking hilarious and like usually like young guys humor is like uh kind of you know just silly you know just awkward and silly because they don't really have a lot to draw on Mm -hmm. but uh but grant is fucking legitimately fucking hilarious man he's like a little character like uh, i like uh there's a lot of like just it's a really cool like i i I can't even name everybody off the top of my head because there's like such a solid crew click of motherfuckers like there's uh, i bet there's more than 10 you know very active funny people with like Real, uh, real good like stage presence. Is this all go bananas like or? Uh, go bananas. I think is like definitely like the 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 castle. Um, but uh, um, all the local mics, Corinthian, the Hub, Drinkery, um, all, all the local breweries seem to have something at some point. But even with all the different venues, it's it's kind of like the same ten to twenty people. You know, like I, I fucking respect all those people <clears throat> that do that thing because I can't be- like. I'm it's a lot like, of fucking work too, dude. Like, like you have a job and you're doing this like seven days a week. Like, the like talk about passion for a thing, and it's just like a lot of times like talking to yourself or like talking to like the same ten people that are talking <laughs> to themselves or the same ten people. Like, like I, I respect that because I love seeing them do that and then be at bananas telling this. They're telling the same joke that I heard at the hub or whatever. But uh, at the hub, like it seems like it fell on deaf ears, but then and then seeing them like seeing it happen this in front of like a legit audience and it and it doing good like uh that shit's just like awesome watching people do their thing man uh that's like 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 it's got to be fucking hard because i feel like uh getting up there and telling jokes is totally different than like let's say playing a show or doing art or something right my, and you go up there and like what if you bomb and all these people start heckling you and shit like how do you handle the pressure right. it, it, a lot of respect these um, dudes are all just up there by themselves. Like you're just up there with your own thoughts and ideas, and you have to captivate an audience. It's like, how the fuck am I gonna do that for whatever your time is? Five, yeah. ten, fifteen, thirty. Right. right. <coughs> and like re- refining the stories and stuff. Uh, you guys know the bit local group Ernie Johnson? You know no. Ernie Johnson from Detroit? No. Uh, they're fucking awesome. Like live live band here in town. Um, but uh, I was hanging out with Eric from Ernie the other day, and uh, turns out we t- we just both found out that like we both enjoy the fuck out of some comedy shit. We were talking about that, but. That's what he was saying too. Even as somebody who's like, he they kill it on stage. They're fucking great, man. And uh, um, like for him as a member of a group that fucking kills it, to like have healthy respect for these guys that are out here doing this stuff. And he knows a couple of those people. And uh, uh, I, I, that's fucking fascinating shit, man. Like it's totally different than like music or art or anything. Like, oh yeah, absolutely. Like, you know, like that's kind of like why I like to go watch that stuff too. Is because like it's it's like a whole different version like where like like i consider like graffiti and mural painting and stuff like that is a type of performance art i've always said that like in terms especially the illegal stuff like you were asked your first question was like how do they get to those places you know like sometimes i see this stuff and i don't know how they got there like what you're actually saying is that's performance art because all you're seeing is the footprints that were left behind right it's like you're like where was the trail that led to that footprint like that footprint is so incredible how the fuck they get their feet there uh like that it's a type of performance where the only thing is what's left behind, you know, instead of most performances, the only thing is what's on stage. And then, and then it gets, the stage gets left behind, but the graffiti I think is like the only performance where the, the artwork gets left behind and you don't want to see the act. You just want to see the, the credits, you know what I mean? Right. It was so cool to see, uh, I'm not as big into the local comedy scene. I mean, I would go out and check them out if I just had more free time, but I just don't, yeah. I'll see bigger comedians, uh, big J. Yeah. Oakerson, Stan Hope when he comes to town, yeah. Bert Kreischer, people yeah. like that, Mark yeah. Norman, people yeah. like that. And, uh, it was. It, I've seen a lot of these guys right before they're about to, or a couple months out from when they're going to put the Netflix right. special yep. or the yep. Showtime special or whatever the fuck. And it's it's exactly like what you're saying. Like I saw Big J live. Yeah. One of the funniest funny, like stand up shows. Bone. It was up at the Liberty Funny Bone. Yeah. yeah. I went to that. It was fantastic. I went to the Thursday night show thinking like, oh, it's going to be a slow night, but this is the only night. You I guys were down at the bottom by the stage, were you, were you front row? Yeah, corner? front row. Front yeah. row corner by the left. Yeah, yeah. He he shouted you guys out. Because oh, really? you guys had well, you guys had some. There was some call and response uh, where he 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 recognized you guys as Skanks fans. I remember there was a table to the left, three guys uh, that that there was some some call and response that you reacted to that he reacted to. That oh no, that wasn't me then. I was okay. right center front. He, okay. I remember right. he never said anything like because cool. he's a big crowd work guy or whatever. Yeah. Because I went to go, we got our seats, and then I went outside to go smoke a cigarette, and I look over to my left, and it's Big J with headphones on, yeah. like, looking at the marquee, and I was like, hey, dude, I'm sorry to be this guy, but I'm a huge fucking Skanks fan, like, can I just yeah. shake your hand? And he's like, no, dude, cool. And he points to my jacket, and he was like, cool fucking jacket, like, starts talking to me about the bands on and shit. Just yeah. real down-to-earth dude. 
well, I saw that shit, that, that stand-up special, minus the crowd work that he did, and how he refined it on his Degenerate special on Netflix. The He's like, I think, first or second one on there, if you guys yeah. haven't checked that out. It's yeah. like a 10-episode series of, like, it, of Joey Diaz is on there, Christina P is on there. Like, there's all kinds of funny-ass fuck, Yamanika Saunders, all kinds of people that yeah. are hilarious. But it was it was great to see, like, that same special that little chunk of material without the crowd work and see him refine it and do yeah. it in the final thing. And I saw the same thing with uh, Stan Hope, his uh, special that he ended up recording in uh, 2000 and, oh shit, what was it, 2014 or 15 or whatever it was. Yeah. And just seeing, like, how this material starts and yeah. then, like, where it ends, it would be real interesting to see him, like, yeah. at a couple of different shows throughout the months to see how the yeah. how the material grows and eventually becomes something. Yeah, yeah, I dig it, man. Um do you follow Matt Fultron? I'm familiar like? with the name, but I, I don't. Um, is he one of Tripoli's boys with the Naughty he, Show and all that shit? He, he's definitely affiliated with like that whole team. Um, uh, but I've seen him at Funny Bone a couple times. Uh, he's a really funny guy too. But I was just thinking though, how you're talking about how you were saw, saw Jay outside and stuff, and and it's like the the accessibility factor of that job is insane. Like it's like yeah. being a fucking politician. Like the, there are like those guys that hit that level where just strangers are constantly asking them questions and stuff. Like the fact that they're able to like navigate that social interaction with constant strangers. And you would assume it's a lot of the same shit a lot of the time, you know? Cause like, the, I, I, I'm, I'm impressed. I'm always impressed by that when, like, the way those guys navigate. Because it's like you do your club, and then you go sit at the bar, and then everybody comes up and, and it says the same stuff and asks you the same stuff that they said in the last place. You know what I mean? Like, but but the the genuine interactions of that, like, like that, I'm 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 as impressed by people's ability to navigate that because as anything they do craft wise, you know, because like to not be a shithead like a hundred thousand times in a row, you yeah. know, is fucking commendable 100 and <laughs> it takes a lot of patience yeah. most of the interactions that i've had with comedians are all fucking great i mean i even like i wrote like some annoying fan letter to stanhope when he was doing this thing called 30 days in the hole and he like he did fi a 15 minute chunk where he's like making fun of me and like it wasn't like malicious at all but it was definitely like fucking with me because i wrote him a fan letter that's like it's paragraphs and fucking paragraphs long and he was like awesome. fuck i'm gonna i'm gonna go to the question mark and move backwards he just keeps He's setting up how long, how annoyed he must be to fucking, like, to answer. He was like, just get to the fucking question already. And it was so fucking funny to hear him, like, say my name and shit, like, shout me out. And then, Damn. like, meeting these people in person, they're all, like, really cool, nice people. Like, none of them yeah. seem like rock star dickheads. Right. Like, yeah. I don't, not to say that all rock stars are like that, but that. No, like, they all be. are. Yeah. <laughs> Every single one of them. But, but it is kind of shitty, too, that most of their fans are, like, four guys like us. Like instead of just like a bunch of banging twenty two year old girls, <laughs> <laughs> sucks a, to be him. Just a bunch of average ass ugly dudes. <laughs> Speak for hey, yourself. Dude, what's up? I bought all your albums. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Want to do a shot with me at the bar, dude? <laughs> I feel like that takes a, a ridiculous amount of patience, though, because I mean, you're just trying to hang out. Like we saw what we saw, Bert Kreischer together, all of us. Wait, how? Um, what's his name? <laughs> Kreischer. Bert. I always fuck up his name. You know what I'm talking about. Nope. Bert's fat. <laughs> so, <laughs> who gives a shit? But we went to go see him, and he was at the bar, and he was hanging out with... Who was the other comedian that Mark, was there? Mark Norman was doing a, a setup in Dayton, and he came down from Dayton to come hang out with him. So it was yeah. him, and then that other Cosby. Jose dude. Yeah, Ho yeah. yeah Cosby Comedy. Just Adrian Cosby, yeah. It looked like they were getting kind of bombarded by people. I just feel like that could be so stressful sometimes. I was yeah. drunk, and I totally bombarded him. I probably could think <laughs> about it. Yeah. It Bert funny. yelled at me. Did he? <laughs> yeah, he like... Because I, I accidentally interrupted Mark Norman's story. He was telling, like, a story. Oh, yeah, that's right. It was the same night that he got in all that fucking trouble about making some, like, comparing school shootings to periods or something <laughs> fucked up. Like, it happens every month, and it's horrible, but we all just stop talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, everybody... what I might have butchered it, but that that was the, the premise of the joke. And he got a fuckload of trouble. This lady went off on him at the, at the show, and it was this night. Like, I saw this shit blow up on Twitter the next day, all hung over and shit. But I'm all hammered at the bar with your fucking uh, British friend doing shots of Patron, like, an animal and then like i was like mark can i get a picture and he was like bert was like what the fuck you interrupted like, you know bert's voice was all high and shit and he like yelled for a second and then i don't know but i just remember being way too drunk and being that fucking guy at the bar Dude, yeah. it was a good time though all right we're at about the halfway point in the podcast i think this is a good time to uh 
Shout out our sponsor, Neil to No One. That's Anthony Tank Mansfield, the dude that hooked us up with Danny. The man. Whoop, whoop, whoop. The fucking dude. He's got these awesome glasses that uh, Pat and Luke are both holding up, and now Danny's holding up. These Neil to No One beer glasses with Hop Thulu on it. It's this cool little Cthulhu character, and it's got a Hop beard. And then he's got these badass samurai glasses, these sifters. They're like goblets, like little glass goblets, real heavy duty looking shit. It's got a samurai and a sword on it. It says Neil to No One. It's it awesome. Holds, it holds 60 ounces it's, get it for your fucking beer drinking needs he's only made 144 of them get them while they're fucking right after they come hot off the presses and shit however they make glass he's got a whole website full of badass shit that's k-n-e-e-l-t-o-n-o-o-n-e dot com he's got t-shirts he's none got, of us wore the fucking t-shirt he's got some badass beer cozies coming out too with the hop thulu on them he's incredible a, art he's incredible a, art phenomenal artist he's doing a live show up in Dayton soon I believe March 8th I might have that date wrong check his fucking website for more details yeah I was just looking too I know he's got a party this weekend he was inviting he, he canceled made, he made, that he made public oh he canceled it entirely yeah. so, terminated the page oh damn yeah salty never salty. mind <laughs> but <good>. anyway <laughs> go check out his shit get Fuck some yeah. get some fucking art get some shirts get some fucking stickers it's all awesome it's all it's, great stuff check that shit out we'll be back motherfuckers all right fuckers we're back <laughs> we're back let's get the shit out of here. what was that he's <laughs> eating these blaze doritos which are spicy as fuck by the way and then danny fuck. punched him in the throat <laughs> <laughs> you guys won't be able to see that you'll hear it audio yeah. listeners but if you want to see that you're gonna have to go to the youtube page <laughs> so um you right before we went on right before we came back you said you said dms yeah on the Burt yeah page. i was thinking uh we were we were joking about that instagram page earlier is uh i think one of the one of the high points that number one i didn't have enough time to like have an alter ego instagram account i'm 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 underperforming as it is in other avenues i can't be having alter egos online but uh one of my favorite things was uh the the a lot of the audience was convinced that it was a legitimate account and uh so i would get messages to tom or ari like from these ladies in like new york and stuff where it's like uh Hey Ari, I know this is I know this is you on this page. Like so funny, uh, and then um, like you know consider <laughs> so con- consider yourself hit on. Like next time you're in New York, you know like you know and then just like some it's all su- just women trying to suck Ari's dude, dick basically. Le- legitimately sucking dick, like like wanting to suck his dick. Not not fuck, not not anything else, but like I want like I want to suck your dick. Consider yourself hit on when you're in New York. Come see me, you know and. Uh, uh, some of those messages were so fucking funny. And like, you know, I would send like a, a thumbs up back, some real general, like <laughs> basic, like, you know, just real cool. basic responses. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Thanks for the support. You know, that kind of shit. Uh, but, uh, really funny, but people were 100% <laughs> convinced that it was like, they're like, they're talking to Tom. They're talking to Ari. <laughs> like, 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 and, and they're like super appreciative of it. And I'm just like. But not not going to like totally catfish anybody and like respond as if I'm them, but like just real general responses back just to see what more. Pops I mean, that's up. what they would probably really do too. Right, just right. Send Ta- us and thumbs then, up. Yeah, yeah, times time of day. Shit. Well, and or then thank they're out you. there. Yeah, then they're out there telling their friends, "Hey, Ari or Bert right. has this fucking account out right. there. You he talked right. to me. Right. Right. He yeah. talked to me. Right. Holy exactly. shit! You sent me a screen, thumbs up. Right. Send them the screenshots and shit. Right. Well, at the uh, at the Bert show at, at Liberty Funny Bone, uh, when I was in line. Um, you know, you, the whole queue to go in, uh, there's fans with like fan art. So this dude's got like a drawing he made, you know, and, uh, and he's super proud of it. It's like, Hey man, can I get a picture of that? You know? And then like, so he's like proudly holds it up, you know, but that gives me like original content. And I post on the page, like fans were great in Cincinnati, funny bone, you know? So then it's like (laughs) just fucking curveballs Cause it's like, nobody knows who the fuck's running it. Used a blow tool on his face. (laughs) (laughs) Fans are great in Cincinnati. He's got a head the size of a fucking empire state building. (laughs) Uh, shit was pretty funny. Like they legitimately thought it was one of those guys, and uh, uh, yeah, I was a fucking pro catfish. What was some of the gnarliest? <laughs> some of the gnarliest messages you got on that page? Pretty much just the just the just the straight. I want to suck your dick, shit. Uh, um, you should have sent them back like Gigi Allen dick pics and stuff like that. Right. I, again, it's a time thing, man. Like I, I barely had time to like. I like once every two or three weeks, I'd be like, man, I need to fucking put something on that page. So I'd Google search something that was relevant to the t- conversations at hand and just throw a fucking picture a google image of some records up like listening to the music right now it's fucking awesome and uh uh just little shit but yeah the, a lot of people fucking believe it 
But yeah, uh, shit right now it's called Blast Havers is the page. I changed it off the Burt shit. I wiped it clean. And right now, so it's like at Blast Havers with a space in the middle. Uh, so if anybody wants to follow it, maybe there'll be some funny shit on there someday. Did you save any screenshots? Anything that you I, got? I think I did. I'd very much it. like yeah. to see. Yeah, because I deleted a bunch of the stuff. Um, but I did. I think I did screenshot. Let's see here. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, shit. Like, okay, so this is the actual page. I still have a lot of the DMs uh, in here. I just faded. I just took off some of uh Hey, Brett, praying for you. We're all rooting for you. It's sad to see Arnie and Tim push you around like that. <laughs> <laughs> I said, classic case of guys who are bullied growing up to be bullies. Ari has that chip on his shoulder. And then he says, Arnie. But yeah, I get what you're saying. Uh, uh, th- th- these it's people are, so you know these people just are stoked. Assume. They just assume. Dude. And they just send you these big personal messages There's like that. 2,000 followers and no check mark and a bunch of like Google <laughs> image yeah. results. Like, like you're, you deserve what you fucking get for talking to this page. Like, uh, uh <laughs> like if I really had the time, I would have, uh, you know, gone in on it, but it, it, dude, I, uh, yeah. That's uh, a good way to acquire a fuckload of followers. Dude, I found that out. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Are you just always listening to a big podcast for that one moment where you could fucking snag a page? I am that? now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I am now. Like, well, I mean, I wish I was more of a, if I had more free time to like whip up designs cause I, I can knock out a design pretty quick, uh, uh, but it's a matter of having the time to do it. But there's several occasions where like, you know, whether you're watching a TV show or a podcast where they, they say some turn of phrase and they go, dude, that'd be a great t-shirt. And they just keep going in the conversation. And you know, there's people out there that immediately jump on that and try to try to do something. But, um, I doubt their turnaround time is very good, but you could, pro- you, there's, you know, ways you could knock out a design you know pretty great fucking at that quick. shit though. Huh? Fighter and the kid. They- oh yeah. Drastic graphics. Uh, uh, that guy pushes a lot of content for image wise. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, he just recently started sponsoring Theo's podcast. Uh, I've watched that guy grow in the past like two years. Uh, cause he's, he started with them doing just like, uh, like silly photoshops. Yeah. Uh, and, and, uh, and he's grown his like, uh, <laughs> like branding marketing business, a bunch drastic graphics like that dude. Uh, He's, he definitely got in at the ground level with that like network of guys doing things. They made a fortune off those fucking t-shirts is what they were saying on Rogan. Yeah, they, he was all about it. <laughs> Brennan Schaub just say some fucking weird shit yeah. and then they were like, yeah. well, that's a t-shirt. And right. Instead of it just right. like right. going to the wayside, he actually turns it into a t-shirt. Right. I feel like it's total time and money thing. If I had the time and the money, I would totally set aside two hours when I hear those little turn of phrases. Not, I, mean, I take notes all the time of my own ideas, my own turn of phrase content stuff that when I have time to knock something out, I'll... I'll flip those into paintings or pieces about something but uh yeah i mean it'd be nice to be fucking financially set where you can just sit around and just knock shit out on a whim and because there, there's there's endless good ideas just being pumped out all the time like that's why that shit's all great you know i, yeah, I have a question to, to delve a little bit further into the art again um how do you feel about minimalistic art uh whack like madrion i, I just want to hear like your full opinion about okay. it okay because uh, i've been to the when i see this stuff whack. at the art museum and i see like their description they're saying they uh-huh. have like a uh-huh. like some euphoric got like experience yeah. epiphany uh-huh. then while doing this and i'm just like there's yeah. two colors yeah uh uh i am not an acad- <laughs> i am not an academic artist and i feel like the whole academia world thing like that is um, number one, it's American fucking excess. It's Western society excess fucking gluttony bullshit. Because like, if you can spend your fucking life obsessing about like nonsense, abstract shape, fucking it's shit, contrived then, and like, pompous, then and... like it's like it's like you have like you are not having if you, if that's your focus in life, you have no worries in your world. Because like <laughs> if you have time for that shit, that means you have no fucking problems. But uh, uh, my 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 uh, kind of impulse answer to that is i've done some like i did a guest painting teaching uh time or two at the art academy where like a a friend of mine would be like hey you know you want to come in and just we're having different people that paint different stuff for a living come in and teach a class like once or twice or whatever during the semester so i would go in i would do this class the art academy and and these are all kids that are learning how to be what i call sandwich artists right and uh uh because they're gonna fucking graduate from art school and like most of them their goal is to either be a teacher or they're gonna work fucking retail but uh, so I explained to him like, <laughs> I explained to him. It's fucking uh, true, dude. I, I tell him sandwich sandwich, era- sandwich artists need erasers too. Uh, fucking. Uh, um, oh, you like painting? Well, I hope yeah, you also like totally stacking not. pans. I hope you like caulk guns and sour cream because you'll be managing Taco Bell. But uh, fucking. Uh, uh, 
<laughs> um, but uh, no, my, my like my I remember my like opening diatribe to him was like, I didn't go to college. I'm not an academic artist. Like I do paint for a living because that's just I've only worked at jobs that where I had to paint art shit for a living. So I've learned applicable things that people actually fucking want and they spend their money on. And so it's like I can't tell you what color of the, in answer to your question. I can't tell you what color purple means your parents got divorced, but I can tell you you know faux wood grain is thirty five dollars a linear foot. You know, like this is what people will fucking buy is painting a wood table like this. Like, like if you're going to fine art, in my opinion, fine art is painting what you want, hoping someone wants it. Commercial art is being able to paint what someone wants and like what people want, they're willing to spend money for. So like if you have a, a, a fine art show and you sell a bunch of paintings, like good for you. But like that's like winning. The, that's like hitting Kino with 10 numbers. Like you're like it's fucking a rare thing. Like but if you can produce what people want that's rare too because like tons of people can sell you art but not everyone who's selling you art can do what the fuck you want like it's like you know i want comic book things in my restaurant i want old school ghost you know go sign inside a fucking biscuit restaurant or whatever you know like uh i want to embellish jeep logo in this parking lot like i i do that kind of stuff uh because commercial art man the root word is commerce you know like it's, it's fucking it's a buyer's market i got a kid to feed man like i'm not out here to fucking be a cool guy like i'm fucking kid feeding my kid and painting some shit and do you know do what i can to make the thing happen Th that makes me Are think you, didn't you tell you i'm sorry just made me think of that uh, artist who did all the star wars paintings. i was just about to yeah. reference him i was yeah, just explain about explain that so you know drew struzan right i don't know Drew Struzan's the guy that's done every single Star Wars poster. He's done the Thing Sick. poster. He's done like n numerous Black Sabbath albums. Cool. Fucking Alice Cooper. Like he's he's the artist that everyone knows that no one knows his fucking name. Sort I love of thing. it. Police that's... Academy. All the old like yep. anything that had a dope movie poster. And he had a quote that sounds very similar to that through uh, one of the documentaries that I watched about him creating a Hellboy poster. He was like, "Yeah, I trace stuff." He was like, people give me shit about it all the time. He was like, I know all the fundamental principles of portrait making, and sure. I could sit there and do that. He was like, but this isn't about me proving something to you. He was right. like, I got a kid. Yeah. He was like, I got a wife. I This is not something, right. this is not a passion project. Right. I have to finish this tomorrow. Not in a week. Right. Not in fucking three weeks. Right. Tomorrow. Yeah. And he was like, yes, I trace stuff. He was like, you can't trace colors with a projector. He was like, you see all the colors that I'm putting into exactly, that? Exactly. Right. He was like, don't let anyone tell you not to trace something. Right. He was like, yeah. you learn yeah. the fundamental values of exactly right. how that face is put together by moving those lines around with your hands. Absolutely. Hand, right? and he was like, don't ever like let somebody yourself. tell you how to do fucking art. And he was time like, is money. So like, he could... He could grid that off or sketch it from reference and draw that portrait he, i guarantee that guy could draw that portrait without the projector but time is fucking money Fuck yeah. and the people buying that poster are, are not interested in whether you fucking drew that gridded it uh pounced the pattern uh you know however you transferred that image um uh, they just want it right as fast yeah. as possible and the faster you can do it the more your hourly goes up I mean, look at the colors from the Blade Runner poster. You know, you can't fucking right. trace those posters. You have right. to have a fundamental understanding of how light works. Exactly. And I'm sure he's done this based on a some kind of photo that he's been given. But, right. like, right. he's creating this whole, like, this design, the raindrops, the way that the color bounces off the faces, the Did way that it all, the way that the that it's turning from, like, warm colors right. to, like, right. cool colors in the background. Right. Like washes, and yeah. He did Harry Potter, too. Is that correct? Yeah, dude. Is that what I'm seeing here? He's done every that's movie fucking poster crazy. that you yeah. can think of, like all Yeah, the... that's awesome. Dan, do you do Stranger Things? That's fucking great. My kids no love shit. that. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's the artist that everyone knows that the, right. no one really knows. Classic and this poster is all, art. It's all shit that looks like something that you would do in Photoshop now. But he right. sat down and he works right. with an airbrush right. and he works with like right. it's all a tactile right. fucking one point That's what I call that. Yeah, dude. Yeah. It's and fucking he, nuts. And he's a master of his craft. And he's telling you to to trace things, bitch. I'm tracing right. things all right. day and all night. Like right. fuck that. Like and <laughs> and it's like if you again, like I said, if you if you come up from reference, like doing life drawings and drawing from life and all that kind of stuff, it's all about that foundation. Like the stronger, um, you know. If this was an art class right now that I'd be teaching, I explain like, uh, uh, you know, things are only as good as their foundation, and like that that matters. Like if you're painting the ceiling in here, like any flaw, any surface flaws you have isn't in the paint; it's in the surface. So it's only as good as the foundation, and it's the same thing in painting and techniques and anything like relationships, uh, fucking anything. Your car maintenance, like it's only as good as the foundation. So like if he can draw from life, then him tracing just 
it's just that it's just fast forward. It's like performance enhancement. But if he could only trace, yeah. then then uh, there's the issue, right? And that would show in the, in the in the rendering. You would see because if he could only trace, that means he'd have no skills for uh, observational references. So the little highlights on the nose or contrast in a nostril or an iris or something, you would see other flaws that are based on observational issues. So like the so the fact that he can render this stuff. And and you don't observe flaws. That means he observed everything properly. You know what I mean? So I see that all day where people use different transfer methods where you can. It's all about power of observation. It's fine. I don't have no qualms with people using projectors and, and tracing light tables, whatever. I use all that stuff too. But I also know what qualities I have in in without those things. So that makes the use of those things a proficient use. You it know? goes back to what you said before about the using the digital pads and things right, like exactly. that using a tablet. Like you want to learn yeah. it the the one point way first mm-hmm. and then transfer it to projectors and tracing and yep. fucking doing the tablet. It's all it's all that foundational stuff. I like to talk about cir- <laughs> circle square triangle. You know, like you think about Da Vinci's like Vitruvian man, uh that's a circle square and a triangle, right? And uh a circle square and a triangle is also a sphere and a cube and a pyramid, right? But like jumping straight to the fast forward techniques just hands you the pyramid without understanding the triangle. You know, so you gotta understand that circle square triangle and then you learn the, the dimensional stuff. Because what that circle square triangle actually is, is one, two, and three point perspective. It's the skeleton of how you do one, two, and three point perspective. And it just happens to be a circle square. The square is the field of image, the triangle is the one, two, three points, and the circle, you know, it's just like the viewer's uh, vision. Uh, but you look at it and you say that's a circle square triangle. But then if you understand three dimensions on 2D, then you're like, oh no, that's like anything you can see in the world and like to understand those foundations makes everything beyond it better uh yeah no shortcuts no, that makes sense <laughs> that's it's like we're getting taught a master class on like it's incredibly enthralling in yeah <laughs> it's it's interesting because I, I went to art school for a little bit for like six months before i switched my major and when I went and actually was sitting there in the classes i, I felt like i wasn't really learning that much but i learned a lot about shading i would say but I, I was definitely thinking the whole time. I was like, I don't know if I have the passion to make this yeah. a career. Yeah. And, like, you really got to fucking drive at it. Right. To right. fucking get, like you were saying earlier. So I, I, I just felt like I had to do something else. Yeah, I totally understand that, man. I went to, I that's what took me out to Seattle originally. I was gonna, I was going to an art institute, like, trade school there. And uh, I did terrible. I was just doing graffiti and partying and shit for, like, the first six months. And so I failed the whole first six months. just terrible scores and uh so i got kicked out after the first six months had to write a letter got reinstituted for another six months where i had to retake that six months again failed that again uh and uh uh the basic things i learned there i think uh um classic stuff where i hear about like when i hear some stuff but other artists when they talk about the getting shit on by teachers and that becomes like their profession uh but uh this one guy who was like a Disney animator was teaching us like figure drawing, like do, do, you know, do 50 different poses of a bag of flour to like, they were saying it was like, there was an old Disney exercise where you just draw a bag of flour and emote different emotions based on the, the gestures of the, of the shapes. Um, and, uh, I, that was a cool exercise. Um, but one thing he said was, uh, you know, what's your competition doing today? Basically every time you take a day off is your competition taking a day off. And, uh, that's, that's, that's a universal thing that's beyond any kind of anything you're doing in the world. Like whatever you're like, every time you sit on the couch, every time you go out to eat it, whatever, like just, so that's basically, so I think that was a great philosophy is what your competition doing today. Um, so like every time you see your, if you have a competition in the world, haters and whatnot, if you have competition and you see that they're, uh, on vacation or at a party or whatever bar hopping or something, they're not fucking doing what they're competing against you at. So, like, if you see them partying, don't be fucking jealous that they're fucking partying. Fucking make some shit because they're not making shit. You know, they're spending money and fucking getting wasted, and they're losing today and tomorrow, you know? Uh, that, so that's a cool philosophy. That's one thing I learned there uh, in my failed stint. And then um, the other thing was, uh, like, the anatomy of the airbrush, taking an airbrush apart and how to clean it. Because, uh, like, again, that fundamental shit, if you understand how it works – then you can use it, right? It's like so, mil- military training, almost. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is my rifle. This yeah, is my, yeah, yeah. Something like that. <laughs> this one's for fun. Everything yeah. that you're saying is 100% true. I think we're applying that to the podcast because we don't ever yeah. fucking take days off. I mean, there yeah. might be something that comes up. Like, Pat's had a work thing come up before where it's like, okay, well, me and Luke are doing it at my house then. Or, like, 
we podcast on Christmas, New Year's Day. I'm sick yeah, right you're now. Sick. Right. Like I, we just don't take fucking days. You have to just keep doing it, and you have to make sure that it comes out at the right time every week. I mean, I feel like that's a great philosophy, not just to apply to art, but just to right. life in anything. general. Anything, right? Anything, totally. If yeah. you want to be successful at something, don't fucking like take as many days off as you possibly can and try to enjoy well, yourself as much like, as possible because you're gonna get left behind. Yeah. Advice is cheap, but being the example is priceless. That line sticks to me every single day, yeah. especially when it comes to like something I'm passionate about. Yeah. When it comes to advice, one of my favorite things is, uh, I, I think I made it up myself, but uh, I just like to, the concept of uh, you know recognizing who your advice is coming from. Because uh, I, like, I have, I've had some friends that like, I've, uh, I've helped when they were like, in transition periods of relationships or houses or whatever. And I exp- and they'll be telling me about something somebody told them that like struck struck a chord, and it's like, well, yeah, that's that sounds great, but like, <clears throat> who told you that? Like, don't take relationship advice from somebody who's like been married six times. You know what I mean? Like, yep. they, they don't know the, like like don't take it financial advice like you know from somebody like that doesn't have a bank account or like can't afford shit. It's always asking you for money, and he's what you should do, man. Like th- like like I, I I only take advice from I only value the advice when I can see it in practice. You know, like practice is proof you know like you don't take word of self-discipline from an addict <laughs> right yeah 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 or a big oh. or a fat person but that's the whole principle of fucking <laughs> aa it's like hey all these drunks and fucking heroin addicts are gonna get together and tell each other how to stay sober and it's like right. hold on are you the guys that are supposed to be teaching the class let's keep the guy let's get the guy that hasn't yeah. been shooting heroin into <laughs> yeah. his veins for 25 yeah. years to teach that fucking that story why is that yeah. the only time that that doesn't apply is it's a very yeah. good question really is it's weird <laughs> yeah right, it's I, kind I, of like a bunch of students getting together and starting a school it's like a college party party movie like we're gonna save the school man let's have a party (laughs) (laughs) but i've definitely been to like aa meetings because my family has issues with uh addiction and substance abuse so whenever i've gone you're absolutely right it's kind of like a little bit of feeling of dread Mm -hmm. in my opinion it is miserable it's uh, they're never really fun but i I mean i understand yeah exactly i understand i I understand the importance of them and i i respect it you know i understand that people need to not feel that they're alone which they feel like every single day while they're addicted yeah you know there's other issues that go into it you're just you're just not addicted you know you have a you have fucking other mental issues yeah so yeah people are feeling alone as shit so when they feel like they can relate with people like well it's not at least it wasn't that bad you know they'll say stuff they'll think like that there's a lot of them diving well, <laughs> well if you, Pat, if you smoke I, no, enough, I'm just like I'm just like thinking, it, just delving into the subject. Sorry, Pat. If you smoke enough meth, you're never alone. There's microphones in your teeth, <laughs> little They're rabbits. In your skin, yeah. the nanobots, man. Yeah, nano bugs. Being watched all the, the time by the government. Brain, yeah, totally. yeah. I'm never Didn't alone with my big my brother bad. watching me. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, dude. We've got a whole fucking since we're going off into the. Into my bad. I didn't mean to segue that, guys. <laughs> Right. Um, no, but speaking of like addictions, let's one, one talk day about at a time. Yeah. Let's talk about uh, <laughs> Florida man says syringes found in his rectum aren't his. Oh shit! What? He <laughs> tripped and fell into a pile of syringes. The, and then... uh, syringes, mm. as yeah. in there were more than one in his. Butt. Not his possessions. Nine tenths, right? What the fuck? <laughs> Florida man says that syringes found in his rectum aren't his. Pinellas County deputies said the man told them that the syringes weren't his and he doesn't know how they got there. What the fuck are you talking about, my guy? Deputies say a man had three syringes in his rectum while being searched at the Pinellas County Jail. When Wesley Scott, 40, pulled the syringes from his rectum, Jesus deputies Christ. said Scott told them they were not his. He didn't know how they got there. How do you just... <laughs> hey, the, I don't know. You think this what dude said it with a straight fuck? face yeah. the whole time? Like, nope, I have no idea how I, those got there. I what? Known. There was three syringes in there? The, the, wind, the wind blew that in there. Like how how were they in there? Were they like <laughs> like bundled in Butter. rubber band with like the sharp end down? I'm or hoping they had the they cap like, on them. Like me too. They or maybe just... uncapped and just like just inserted into the butt, and he just pulls them out when he's oh the way that you can the way that you can take like a, a sewing needle and put it yeah, through the upper layers exactly of skin. You like think that. that. Yeah, right. He inserted Jesus. the syringes, in, but into his rectum fuck? skin. Yeah, into that like little extra layer of were rectum. The, skin. Were they empty? Yeah, dude. Were they empty? Like why would you? Why would you? contraband style what are they called prison purse why would you prison purse empty syringes prison wallet if you're a man prison wallet oh Oh, yeah yeah maybe he was i think if you're i think if you're carrying stuff in your butt it's a purse okay that's he he was he was planning (laughs) ahead for the future heroin purchase in the clicker yeah i'm gonna need these for later (laughs) i might as well stock up i can't get caught with these damn wonder if those are like hundred (laughs) dollar bills in jail though it's saying 
this I'm thing sure down here. Worth money in yeah, jail. Totally. Scott had just been arrested on a warrant for a previous drug charge. Deputies say he's now facing an additional charge of introducing or possessing contraband in a county detention facility. So I feel yeah. like it, it didn't have drugs in it because it wouldn't be just contraband. What if he's diabetic? That's true. Maybe it was. Yeah. Maybe that was his EpiPen that he really totally. needed for his peanut allergy. Like, I, know the, I know the medical attention ain't so good in here. <laughs> so, I brought my own. I got a DIY. Diabetes lives matter too. Oh god. <laughs> All right, well. Damn. Fucking Florida man. Always Florida man. Isn't that because Florida has, like, open records or something like sunshine that? Sunshine law. Yeah. yeah uh, seriously? Yeah, the pre- I've never heard of this. Yeah, the sunshine law. The press is allowed to have access to police records prior to, like, convictions and things like that, whereas most states, like, got to be proven guilty before shit gets hits the fan, so you, media-wise. So you're saying most of this Florida man shit is real? Oh, it's all real. Well, it's it's not, all real. Yeah, it's all real. Does it mean yeah. it's true? But no, that's the, it, that's not the point that he's making at all. It's like, like like he he might, I mean, like, you hear all the deep, so my, my, I actually was just talking to family in Florida over Thanksgiving about this. Like, <laughs> it's not that Florida's oh, crazy. I see what this is, Dan. You're trying to defend your Oh, no, no, I'm Florida not. Relatives. No, no, no. If right. they're listening. Dude, dude, dude Florida's I, I, okay. D- dude, I grew up in Indiana. I can't defend anybody. Uh, <laughs> fucking, uh, um, no, they, they live there now. They stay there. And uh, um, they, they, they winter there, they say. And uh, uh, Whatever but makes I was, it sound better. Uh, yeah, I was explaining to them, though, that like it's not that Florida's crazier than everywhere else. It's just access to information is, <laughs> is op- more open. Uh, I guarantee you Ohio has some shit that we don't hear, you know? Oh, Cause, fuck cause, yeah, dude. Because people are protected until they're, until like, Especially like with the high drug use. Like when, uh, when that family like got slaughtered for, on the East side, they just, they just found out it was a custody dispute. You know about that, right? What? Like, uh, like they just, they just finalized it like a month ago. Yeah. Like, like yeah. Two, so they thought you know, it was like Mexican they it was a cartels. Cartel. Yeah. But it was just like domestic dispute, family over custody of a kid. And they what fucking, happened? they like, execution styled like six what? family members. Like, no like, fucking ten. way. Yeah. Execution style? Yeah. Yeah. Like, like back of the head knee type shit in, a, in, like a, in the country they thought it was execution by cartel dudes but it was like it was just multiple members of the family on the other side that wanted that custody of that kid that is um, wild but i hope i never get murdered it was a silent story <laughs> it was a silent story here in ohio because <laughs> because we don't have access to the information of like daily updates of what they're thinking it is whereas when they file that stuff in, in florida they're like you know it looks like it's this and they'll just put it right out there in the media uh you know, if it bleeds, it leads. That's got to that's, that's gotta nice. suck for anyone awaiting, like, court trial yeah, there. Yeah, Like, because everyone who's read it already has yeah. an image in their yeah. mind. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Fuck. I'm trying to find the story that you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, that's yeah. A Mur- Murdered Ohio is good. Yeah, uh, you could say family massacre. Uh, what? what um, is it Claremont County? I don't know. But it definitely. Is it the Wagners? The Wagners and the County? Rodins? I think that sounds right. Wagner. The murder of eight, eight people that yeah, rocked that's probably Southern it. Ohio. That's probably I, yeah, it, yeah. yeah. It seems Lord. it's eight. The youngest murder of member eight. of the family with the murder of eight people that rocked Southern Ohio appeared in court Tuesday pleading not guilty to nearly two dozen felonies linked to the 2016 slayings. Yeah, they they came in there and fucking killed everyone. Yeah. Like, all four of these people got convicted. Good of Lord. They yeah. all look like maniacs. So. God, it blows my mind out. Oh, my God. So nuts, right? It just blows my mind that people out there just fucking murdering people like this. That yeah. guy is a maniac <laughs> for sure. From a distance, I would see him, man. I George would, like, Billy Wagner. The we're first. never crossing paths, friend. He's got kind of like a, a pear-shaped head. Like his head just kind of, and then it blows up. He thing. looks like a Hoyas mascot. A Hoyas mascot? Like a bulldog? He looks like a cartoon <laughs> bulldog. <laughs> oh my God. He does look like the, Roasted. that red dog on the red dog can of beer. Yeah, yeah, Red Dog, exactly. You always have to have respect for a family, though, that has the (coughs) decency to give a fourth George. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, You know, they got to keep the George line going. We'll keep it going. Let's call him George. Now, son, when you get older, you're going to name your son George the Fifth. Roster disowned. And then we're going to pass down the family tradition of making math in a trailer. (laughs) Good Lord. The family business, as they call it, in the Wagner family. Yeah, it's, it's fucking crazy <laughs> shit. Hold on. How do we get into this rabbit hole? Hold okay, on. I was going to say, but as, as the Florida <laughs> stuff goes, this is like one of the crazier stories out of Ohio that we've been allowed to know about. That's my point, is like this kind of crazy shit could happen all the time, but we just don't know because they, they sit on the info to protect everything involved until they know something. But Florida's just like, check out this shit that might have happened. Did you did you say that to your family members and then look outside and there was a dude riding a fucking crocodile down the street firing an AK-47 <laughs> for the air? Totally, yeah. Like, well, maybe it is Florida. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
No, you're right though. I, I heard the same thing about like how they get access to all that shit, and there's probably nutty shit happening everywhere. I mean, we're at the epicenter of the. I'm <clears throat> sorry, excuse me, I'm sick. But uh, we're at the epicenter of the uh, uh, opioid crisis right yeah, now. Yeah, I bet there's a lot of crazy shit yeah. that has happened. Yeah. Uh, well, I've people lost, are... like, Go ahead. I don't know. I've lost, like, fucking to opioids. Like, mm-hmm. just people that I know and, like, also family members and shit like that. It's like 10 plus or something like mm-hmm. that. All dead from either heroin or some opiate or fentanyl-related right. death. Right. Yeah. Yeah, the fentanyl stuff's crazy, man. And like... that leads to a lot of fucking crime and a lot of insanity, a lot of nutty shit going on all the time, yeah. constantly. You're, oh, you're here you friends go. friends with stories like that. You guys entertain conspiracy theory ideas. Sure. Uh, this is Bring a, it on. This is a, a Dannyism potential. Is, uh... You know, like Bush era, you know, Bush Sr., CIA, Bush Jr., Cheney, you know, maybe Shadow Prez, all that kind of stuff. Like, there's all kinds of stuff about, like, crack in the hood and the CIA operations, Arkansas, moving coke and crack and mm-hmm. stuff to L.A. The government uh, in- right, introducing right. it. And there. true as fuck, because it's all, like, public info. Iran that's that's all real. The and, then, and then this is my this is one of my little just, like, you know, daydream ideas is the whole idea of history repeating itself and stuff is uh you got, like, the crack epidemic amongst disenfranchised populations that might have been left leaning in like the 80s right to like help strengthen the right and like ever since then the mass majority is is left and it's because of gerrymandering that it's really hard you have to have a way overwhelming flood amount of left to to counter the gerrymandering of the right so so Gerry- it, gerrymandering is where they 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 change up the way that fucking state lines yeah. vote or whatever yeah, and the they, way that the electoral college yeah. chooses who what side we're voting for based on like yeah they it, draw it, the map up into a fucking jigsaw puzzle that yeah. way that they know where yeah. all the republicans yeah. live and so shit. they kind of loop more than well over 50 percent of an area is going to be towards the republicans so that you have to have a high a, an overwhelming like over two-thirds percentage of of left maybe to to make anything count uh but so you have those things that are all very true and proven and real uh so my personal theory is uh uh, not theory potential possibility is uh with the popularity of uh cheaper to free health care um health care is expensive uh (laughs) some of the things that the government spends a lot of money on is things like prison and hospitals uh for the poor and most of the people that are poor in hospitals or in prison are drug related lifestyles. So it's cheaper to throw like a couple grains of fentanyl in all these people's doses because fuck an addict anyway. And then uh, these people drop. Suddenly the users of public facility health care uh, are people that aren't fucking drug addicts. So it's like it could be a way to this is just like an idea, a hypothesis, but it's like I don't necessarily believe this, but I could see it being a possibility that's is a, is like, you know, just wipe out the fucking drug addict culture. Just, that, just even if it's just like bumps of cocaine. And so what if we lose a couple of like our our, our privileged fraternity brothers or our, or our pretty white daughter that likes to go to the beach? Like, so what if she took a bump of cocaine at an art party in San Diego and, and we lost one? In general, we're losing these kind of people. So we might lose a couple of these pretty ones. But like, you know, in general, we're going to lose the, the class that isn't contributing to the taxes that fund the health care that they're leaning on it could i i could see it being a right-leaning conspiracy to kill fucking poor drug addicts that lean left it's a super interesting conspiracy theory but let me be the devil's advocate please now a lot of uh a lot of prisons are privately owned now yeah and a lot of these prisons like they get bigger and bigger sanctions based on the amount of inmates that there are so doesn't the drug laws being in place and as stringent as they are and having a fuckload of people in the prisons, even if it's overpopulation in these prison centers, isn't it like more beneficial to their pockets? I hear you. But the, but the, but the, the, (laughs) such a high majority of us want to decriminalize a lot of things. And we, we think that the criminalization of those things is what actually causes the problems. So as that becomes, because as, as, older conservative crotchety types die off there's going to be like an 80 percent plus margin of people that think that decriminalize decriminalizing and therapy and you know cognitive behavioral therapy and and consultation is a lot fucking better than what i call deform de- deformation centers like there's you know reformatories like like a reform center it's it's all deform centers right they and, slap uh, them with the big f the felony right. they can't get a normal job they right. can't fucking work anywhere right. they go to criminal college right. for fucking six years and or we, however long it is and and our generations recognize that that like it's a matter of like mental health therapy you know compassion education uh 
uh, like we recognize that and we recognize that it's cheaper to send somebody to a therapist on the public dime for 10 years than it is to put them in prison for like 25 or 30. And, and as long as the people that invest in those private prisons are investing in this other entity, like, you know, markets change and shit, you know, like salt goes from being fucking worth gold to nothing, you know, uh, um, you know, if digital currency takes over, then fucking, you know, everything that we back our money with goes to nothing. Like, like markets change, but the fucking, the, the big movers, the, the top dudes, they're smart. They're ahead of the curve, you know, their corporate Coca-Cola is investing in weed, you know, like, uh, uh, the, 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 those, they didn't get to that point by making bad decisions. So they would migrate with the, uh, with the thing, but, but it would make it very affordable, you know, like, cause we all know good people that have passed away on accident from that stuff who aren't fiends. They just took a bump somewhere and you know fell out and like that's tragic but they're they're one out of a thousand Mm because the other 999 have been narcaned from a fire truck 16 fucking times and every time they do that it's costing them 1500 to a grand you know what i mean to like i have a neighbor three houses down from me he's been narcan twice in a day several times like i was at the bar the other day and somebody got narcan everybody's freaking out me and the dude that we're at the bar with i was like ah someone's getting narcan seen it already and they drive a fucking (laughs) fire truck there and a couple ambulances and two cop cars show up (laughs) and like the billable hours that they say that shit costs like if i drove to your house cost me a dollar 15 gas if they drive to your house they it's fucking this is 1600 dollars. you know like the well, numbers ambulance costs like 600 dollars or right. something but it's what like is 1600 like right. you said it's fucking but, insane yeah like, it's you ridiculous get a crazy but, bill in the mail but like what does like three three fucking <laughs> salt grains of fucking fentanyl cost you know like next to nothing and it'll that, kill three people. how many how many trips do they save and they've already got that money that they say it costs they're sitting on that money like that's that's money in their bank that's their fucking pensions and their health care and their kids fucking college funds that's all their shit man like uh i don't know so, yeah again it's a, it's a hypothesis so I, you think that it this just sounds so definitely evil be... it sounds so fucking but so evil. is the crack so is the crack <laughs> epidemic all of it is evil. right exactly being that's the thing yeah it was, yeah the whole it was evil as fuck and, and that was happened. real as fuck and, and everybody involved in that became like the top tier of the government for the past like 25 30 years like, michael rupert got on fucking wasn't he in like the he was the head of the san diego county like sheriff's office and then went in to do like cia shit yeah. he testified in front of Congress during the Iran Contra thing that he had personally seen the fucking right. helicopters shipping right. the fucking cocaine. And then you have like the the real Rick Ross talking about like meeting with CIA guys and yep. getting getting the plug. Uh, you know. They yeah. were straight up setting up this thing to happen and it's already happened before. So it's an interesting it happens. theory. Yeah, yeah. It happens all the oh, fucking sure. time. The US government's not a very nice person just anyways. Sounds, it's just all evil. It's all about It's it's very possible they're entirely <laughs> evil. <laughs> It's all about corporate interests and like what what's making them money and saving them money and things like that. There's just a lot of corporate freedom. I I like that pontification idea though that like what if fentanyl was the new CIA crack, you know? Because because crack emaciated like black communities and cultures and families and just destroyed like generations of people. Like it's like you go from like having your grandparents not be able to go to school to now you're the first generation that can go to college. But you know we're just gonna like we're gonna. Inf- infect your culture with <coughs> something that just like destroys your ability to have any life skills at all and like you know that 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 delays your rise so we can sit on this for a little while longer similarly uh with right now i mean with the f- information that the internet provides um the i mean the more information you get the more you lean towards uh, like a progressive ideal. I wouldn't even say Democrat ideal. I'd say like progressive. And uh, like the more information you get, the more you would just, I think, go towards progressiveness. And uh, you would also lean towards behaviors that might allow for a couple grains of fentanyl to allow you to negate that opinion, you know, because they're, they're way lower percentages of existence on the, the other side of things. But I digress. That's an interesting conspiracy theory. I wish that... Uh our our round earth and our friend had came at us yeah with i wish he was here that much information uh, i love be, you robert i love the round earth shit uh uh flat earth shit yeah. uh i met a guy in louisville uh, we have a graffiti jam down there every year and i met a guy friend of mine from canada uh and we were talking podcast and flat earth to- topics and shit and he brought it up and i thought he was joking and uh and <laughs> i he, feel the same way whenever yeah, someone brings it up he was like he was like he's like you know but you don't know this or that and i was like what dude i was like are you serious and uh he's like i mean have you ever really thought about it i go dude eclipses are awesome you know like light and shadow spheres in space you can't deny the fucking fact these eclipses exist they talk about the moon's like 150 miles away or 70 or something the, the sun is 300 or some shit but 10 uh, feet away you get on a step ladder and yeah. you touch it you pull cheese off of it and eat it my my, my uh 
I, I, like I said, my favorite thing is saying like my head is flat because I can't see the back of it. But my my main premise to to for flat Earth folks is, uh, and I appreciate like their pseudo critical thinking, but uh, uh, like if you can tell me before you tell me about like the existence of the fucking like they talk about uh, ice walls. Yeah, ice walls, ice walls giants. Ezekiel's <laughs> wheels is one of the things they'll cite. But like, uh, what, what, <laughs> like, like, what, what, this is my okay. When I met my friend and told me to like, you know, get in on it, uh, I I got in on it. I chilled and instead of Netflix and her podcast, and I just fucking watched all their fucking shit for like three or four weeks and just tried to get a layer or two past their various talking points. But uh, what I think is really interesting is like in a, in a time where like nobody's like you know religion is like a, a bad word, but. I think the from from anything I've really gotten in on that shit, I feel like I think it all kind of stems from like young earth Christians and it's like a pseudoscience to to justify young earth Christianity and then everybody with like anti-establishment anti-science views just so just happens to like overlap with young earth scientists. So like they'll reference a lot of biblical stuff and uh so and they'll all weird. do it on a fucking cell phone and then they'll put it on social media, all things that <laughs> science has contributed to their oh, fucking lives. Oh yeah, lives. yeah using a phone. Like, but I don't yeah. believe in satellites. Right. right. <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't believe in satellites, but this phone works. I just touch it and I can scroll through and I can watch fucking yeah. every bit of porn that's ever been made ever for fucking 100 million hours and fucking 4K quality. Yeah. But yeah, the the satellites it's it's all fake Our bullshit. F- first episode ever we had a flat earther on and we talked about that and it was the day of the eclipse actually and just Perfect. like you were saying yeah. like he refused to watch it and i thought it was kind of like something like, refused this is, to watch it he refused to watch that's it. that's ostrich shit he like turned stupid. away from it yeah yeah, yeah. No, he just was like I'm, I'm just not gonna yeah. care about well, it then it doesn't happen right I didn't see it. but i remember being outside and looking at this shit and yeah. i'd be like wow this is fucking crazy you're taking it for granted like gods and sacrifice and were created all of this dude, shit dude everything like every indigenous population in the world forever like right now it's about 300,000 years they say homo sapiens have existed like with this brain that thinks like this and this heart that beats and this humorous and femur like we have been like this we've been this form for like 300 grand right now at this point that we know of like right? past wise so you have 300 fucking thousand years of existing <laughs> like this and for the past like 2000 we've had this current version of society and stuff but so there's 298,000 years of uninterrupted thinking like this and every adult indigenous culture was obsessed with what happened up there and how this works right and like it's fucking crazy dude it's so crazy and uh like to deny like humanity's obsession with how the sun and the moon and the stars revolve through like infinite space like we've been obsessed with this forever and then now that we have all this fucking information these fucking uh, you don't say retard in our house, right? I have a 12 year old, right? But she thinks furries are ridiculous people, so we say furtard. So I feel like flat earthers are like furtards. <laughs> oh my God. She's in sixth grade and she hates furries, so we just call them furtarded. <laughs> furries are the worst. I feel like they and might they be purged. <laughs> I digress again. Let's talk about some other shit. All right. Next thing up here. That was enthralling. That was interesting. Thanks, Very interesting. Oh, yeah. But yeah, it's very fascinating that the people believe that with all the fucking infinite knowledge we oh, have of dude. that shit. Dude. It's that, hard to comprehend, I'm sure. Like if right. you were sucked into space and you, you, you're just an average citizen, you just go to space, your mind probably won't be able to comprehend what the fuck's actually happened and won't even feel real. And so I understand, but it's just like, it's there, dude. Like, yeah. look at all the fucking evidence. Dude. The, seasons, tides, eclipses, fucking math, science. Waves and shit. It, like, dude, like... It's it's so much crazy. Like, I think I think part of the denial too is like recognizing that that is fucking mind bendingly crazy. It is. Reality Absolutely is hardly fucking is. crazy. It's hard to comprehend. So like, it's 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 more comforting to come up with a fake version that you can you can fucking bullshit about that none of them agree with each other on versus like this shit that like real smart people are studying and this is crazy to the smartest people that have ever existed and this is real and it's crazy you know it is fucking crazy and it's so hard to comprehend like the size of things that are outside in space too like uh jupiter's like 300 400 i'm not a fucking sure well, I yeah, mean, and it I, just I don't, six times bigger than the Earth or some shit. I don't want to totally hijack your format if you guys want to go in on this stuff. But let's do it. But uh, let's go into it. Um, let's like into it. one of my favorite uh, like topics of like uh, what they would call like a thought experiment, but it's just recognizing like the the current knowledge. But like you know, 
they say like a Tyson Neil deGrasse just posted something recently talking about like the the percentages, which I like that he just put that up there the other day because I I reference this a lot in just casual conversations. But uh, um, like uh, it's a, it's just under five percent of of existence of known observable matter is is observable matter, and like eighty five percent is dark energy, I think, and then the remainder yeah. is dark matter, and. Uh, uh, but what the the reason I just know those numbers off the top of my head from just something you like posted the last day or two, but m- my personal obsession on that like f- f- that that idea is the majority of everything is unmeasurable, invisible, untangible, unrecognizable, incomprehensible. We can only comprehend five percent, and that baffles us. Like that that five percent baffles us. So like the ninety five percent is it, we have yet to discover like the x-ray the microwave the radio wave you know the 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 gamma ray like all the types of waves of existence that we've been able to uh create sensories for like through via antennas and and invention like we've we didn't invent the microwave we discovered their existence and capitalized on it but they existed like an x-ray moves through this planet like it moves through our leg in a picture like it yeah. doesn't recognize the planet as a thing it just fucking whoosh. Right just through, goes. like just like sound in this room, you know, it's it's just a thing that moves through stuff, and ninety five percent of everything that is unknown even does the same thing, and like it th- that is way more interesting, way more relevant, way w- requires way more fucking thought than your like Ezekiel wheels fucking turtle dome b- bullshit, yeah. like <laughs> like like. That is crazy. You hit the nail on the head so hard and so precisely because that's yeah. exactly what. Now, not Robert Reynolds, but the first. The, you won't be able to find this episode, but the the first time that we sat down with mics and recorded in my garage, we sat down with one of Luke's friends that were one of these round earth denier people, or straight up flat earther people. Yeah. Straight up flat earther. Right. And it's exactly like what you're talking about. He didn't. He wanted to have an easy to process and cope with world yeah. that he wasn't. He didn't want to think any deeper. He didn't want to because he, he was he kept making ridiculous points. He was like, "Well, the Bible says uh-huh. that there's ice on the moon," and I was like, "No, it doesn't. What? Nowhere in the fucking Bible does it say that." First off, second off, why are you quoting the Bible when we're talking about science? Third, what do you mean, man? How does that relate to what we're talking about? He kept saying ridiculous shit like that. He was yeah, like, I'd be like, "You're not like, respecting me" or some shit like. Or that. he was like, "Tell me one one thing." that science has done to directly impact your life. And I pulled my phone out of my pocket. I was like, how about this? I was like, how about the clothes that we're wearing? Right. I was like, how about like or this people talk about microphone that we're People deny into. climate change and shit while they're sitting in it. Like there's places where AC, air, air conditioning is illegal, right? Like a lot of the UK and shit. Like they just don't even do it because of like Freon and, and, yeah. and you know. But uh, like. It's fucking 60 degrees the, out. The right same now. people that like deny climate change sit on upholstered couches in air conditioning. Mm-hmm. Like, what is more climate change than building an artificial fucking entity that you live inside of and adjust the fucking air, and then you're going to, like, sit in your little, you know, pompous, puffy zone and, like, preach about how much you know about the outside world. It's like, you're so fucking... Com- it's, okay, here you go. I'm, I'm going in on it. Let's Dude, go. Another, another one of my my diatribes, I just... I call tires Deep and fires. Deep into fi- Danny. Yeah, I call tires and fires. Like, uh, And I equate it to, like, Cash Cab, the TV show, right? Mm-hmm. So Danny's philosophy of tires and fires is, like, you can pick up these, like, you know, $150,000 a year salary, you know, software marketing guru, you know, uh, Broadway patronizing, Emmy Award watching folks. These, like... Tr- trivial human society obsessed trivial knowledge right um and they go in they get they get picked up in the cash cab and they get asked a bunch of pop culture questions and they're so smart they get two thousand dollars whatever and they go on their way and they're happy they drink the wine they go fucking party in their condo uh they answer all these fucking questions but i wonder how many of them could change a tire on the fucking cash cab or start a fire if the fucking power went out like if your city of excess just turned black and you can't go you can't run to kroger because it's already been robbed like do you know how to eat food? Do you know how to acquire food? Do you know how to make a fire? Do you know how to like make that car work that you depend on so much? Like, do you know how to do anything to survive whatso fucking ever? Meanwhile, you're thriving in this artificial fucking habit trail of existence. Like, like it's what I call know it all, know nothings, right? Mm-hmm. And, the invention of a grocery store has ruined a lot of that. Yeah, that's it's, it's fucking wild, man. You know how many people I run into that can't just fucking cook? Even with like right. all the shit that they're presented with, they're just like, I can't cook, and I'm like. 
what what do you mean you can't right. cook like right. it's so easy to cook like people used to have to fucking you have to like run dude. after it with a fucking stick for three days dude. until it was so tired and you got to jab it in the eye and fucking beat the shit out of it the <laughs> amount of people that it, the amount of people that, that eat a bear is not coming to eat your asshole dude. first <laughs> and then fucking cook it over a fire and hope for the best you right. know, get some worms and you gotta it. start that fire yep you know uh and you gotta make something to cut the wood to start the fire with yep. like make a fucking tool uh the amount of people that eat like chicken nuggets that would be horrified by cutting a chicken's head off and fucking feathering mm-hmm. it. Just fuck haunting, fuck big shit, kill a fucking chicken, clean a fish. Like, how many people would be grossed out by cleaning a fucking fish? Like, fucking babies, man. I've had people yeah. sit there and talk about how bad factory farming is while they're eating, like, fucking, like, sure. a juicy cheeseburger, right. and I'm like, right. that's... The fuck did right. you raise that <laughs> it's like, it's like, talking about? The, the, talking the, to me about it over lunch where they're dude. eating meat. And I'm like, hold on a minute. What are you talking about? You know you know the cow personally? You killed him yourself. You know that he had a happy life. You know he was killed just right. right. You butchered right. the meat. Like, right. shut the fuck up. Like, what are you talking and about? If you, and if you have the cow yourself, you can feed your family for a month or two. You know, you have one cow that you kill and you respect the shit out of it. And then you feed your, your son, daughter, family for like a month or two. And you killed one cow. You go to the fucking McDonald's, you kill five or six cows for like your three Happy Meals or whatever. Right? Yeah. Uh, the amount of, and then the, the similar to what you're talking about there, is uh, like the amount of, you're talking about cruelty is a factory e- eating, far- eating factory farming, talking about factory farming, is uh, I like the amount of vegans I know that like do like Molly and cocaine and shit. And it's yeah. like, oh, yeah. your, your body's a fucking temple, like, <sighs> you know? Yeah, it's <laughs> just snorted like a bunch it. of child death. You just right. snorted yeah. a bunch of totally. fucking cartel murders <laughs> yeah. and like all kinds of horrible shit. Totally. But even more, the vegan thing. Shout out, shout out cartels. <laughs> <laughs> Here's an interesting thing about Happy vegans, 2019 though. party uh, I heard this on Rogan's podcast And I, I don't know if I ever Validated how accurate this statement is But apparently And it does make sense that Unless you're raising your garden yourself And harvesting the vegetables yourself The murder that goes into fucking sure. like Taking farming. crops up and farming right. Is like It's something crazy Like three or four times that Of like per square acre yeah. Of how much death occurs compared to like a farm that's dedicated to killing cows right. doesn't make killing those cows any better these giant harvesting like right. combines right. destroy ground nesting birds yeah. and ecosystems yeah for rats, various yeah snakes, I've definitely i definitely heard him say rabbits. that stuff too i also think about like you say ecosystems where it's like i was talking to a friend last night about that uh you know edible plants like you know every every tree and bush in your society is something inedible whereas you knocked down an entire functioning ecosystem that you could eat almost everything in it to build that building there and then put up grass and trees that you can't eat from like uh all that stuff cohabitates perfectly together and yeah. if you would just live in it you would have the same 298 thousands of uninterrupted years that we had prior to this and now we have we've done this thing that we're doing for 2000 years and we think it's so fucking important and like all we have is like a destroyed fucking habitat yeah. Yeah. and like it just like plants also have like their life too you know they they have defense mechanisms to protect themselves like when you cut grass and you smell that fresh cut grass that's a defense mechanism released by the plants to let other let other plants know what's going on, even though they can't do anything about it. But it's the same with the onions. Onions don't have that smell or I believe that taste until you take them out of the ground. Yeah. Uh, then it's a defense mechanism as well. And That's why I've been learning plants. how to how to digest air and <laughs> get all my calories Photosynthesis. just from air. Yeah. Photosynthesis. I mean, nothing can be heard. I just live on the power of positive thinking. I just, <laughs> yeah. I digest negativity. And Shit's got to die so you can live, <laughs> folks. That's how it That's works. That's how it works. Yeah. Things got to die so you can survive. That's how the human brain evolved yeah. to this point in the first place. It's shout, how shout civilization out to exists stuff. because of dead, <laughs> shout stuff out the dead stuff that we killed. You know, speaking of, uh, well, we're on this topic. I saw um, this this uh, article pop up, and two of these, two of my friends on Facebook were were commenting about it. It was uh, this lady had shot and killed this giraffe in uh, like Southwest Africa, mm-hmm. and uh, the fucked up part was about her mounting. She fucked the bullet hole. Was like the so, mounting oh, was the, oh. was the whole giraffe's head was mounted, and then it was like curved down into oh, this yeah. fake like. Like drinking pond? well, she made yeah huh. this fake pond. Hell so yeah. it looked it was like a weird setting. Like it's still alive, but it's fun. Mm. But <laughs> that, <laughs> like, that, that was, was fucked, fucked up, up image. That, that was, was fucked up. So but, did it have a but, long neck mounted? Yeah, it was yes. the whole Sick. neck of it was fucking mounted. Floor. But uh, her name was like Tess something. But the thing was was uh, it was just that picture, and people were saying like fuck this bitch, like she deserves to fuck. die in like a fucking ground with no one to know where to find her body. 
Uh, but the thing no, was, her head on dude, while drinking a glass up. of water. What 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 Images. the thing was was uh she she had said that she had paid the three thousand dollar like hunting fine and that the giraffe she had killed was directly responsible for uh, stomping out three younger uh, giraffe calves. Mm -hmm. And it was 18 years old. It was past its mating prime. Mm -hmm. So she did all the correct steps to kill it. She killed it. Then she ate all of it. (laughs) She was just able to bring it back and trophy mount it. You know what would be funny? Yeah, Yeah, that's that's right there. What the fuck? That is so fucked up. And, and but but scroll up. This is all everyone's. No oh, regrets. No, this I is her. Not, this is her posting. Yeah. With patience, persistence, and prayers. <laughs> <laughs> I got to murder this giraffe with yeah. the love of Jesus. It's so wild that she got like the whole front part and the entirety of the neck. Jesus. I, I thought you were gonna say when you said it stomped out the the, the younger giraffes. I thought you were gonna say it stomped out three kids, like people kids. Oh. And uh, uh, I was like, oh, that makes sense. Like, drop it. But like, uh, but yeah, giraffes stomping out giraffes. <laughs> like, uh, what if people did that? What if uh, when a person fights three guys at once, pop, 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 you just stomped out three of your species? Do do you just get shot? Hmm. You get executed. In I mean, I mean, if you're sure. not if you're not 18 to 24 anymore, you're not in your prime breeding years. So Good like point. you've served your time for the purposes, right? Like, do you just get like shot? I don't know. I'm just, again well, put thought experiments. Cage. They'll put you in a cage for the rest of your life, and they'll execute true, you true. in certain you'll states. True, true. You go to the zoo. Yeah, yeah. What they're, if we had those animalistic features zoo. once we hit a certain age? Yeah, we just go ballistic just almost. Little fucking nubs on our heads. Or we just shit. like don't give a shit about our like Turn offspring at that point. Just start flinging shit at each other. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the weird thing is we don't trust nature to nature anymore. Like we have to always intervene, and we're like, oh, this fucking giraffe stomping other giraffes out. We gotta fucking kill it. That yeah. way it doesn't well, kill any other giraffes because they're endangered. And it's like, but that's our own fault. Hold on, it's our fault they're endangered, and now we're not letting them nature. But yeah, when yeah. old male giraffes get older, they'll start killing all the younger male giraffes, and it, it becomes a serious problem when they're endangered. It's There's fuck. fewer. It said right. uh, that there was like fewer than a hundred thousand giraffes in that the area. The fuck do we need giraffes for? The entirety for? of the country. They do look cool. Just... <laughs> what do we need giraffes? Let's let them for? stomp each other to death. But... We need giraffes for. I don't. Need I mean, Toys R Us is out of business. Life. Yeah, so his arrest is gone. There's no more yeah. need for giraffes. Oh, well, the, giraffes. Ne- the next step is obvious. Wow, the giraffes Cody, what the fuck? Gone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, like, I mean, realistically, you ever need a giraffe? Ever? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck do we need polar bears for? They're giant murder machines that live in the <laughs> North Pole. We got pictures of them. We got videos. Just let them die. Fuck them. Dude, it's going to be so <laughs> catastrophic and sad when in, like... 30 years we go to a zoo and the entirety of it's just holograms and then we've got like a, a buffalo or something no and like that blade just, runner should be just dope. one buffalo in a cage everything else will be, just a be an animatronic i don't think you would even go to the zoo i think you'd put on like a headset and you'd sit vr and you'd click zoo and then you would just like walk and you're just getting zoo. mauled by a lion yeah 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 <laughs> actively yeah, yeah. or no 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 knowing us and and that world we'd probably just fuck all the animals oh my goodness virtual i know v- i would vr so you v- say you VR, hate furries. vr zoo bestiality uh, that, that 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 would be a, f- a real future. That would be for the furries. <laughs> so yeah. you say you hate furries. Why why do you hate? Oh, furries? I don't. I don't necessarily. I don't think they're real. But uh, uh, I mean, they're people that dress up in an- as animals right. and they fuck each other. It's totally real. Yeah, no, that's, that's real. That's weird. It's absolutely yeah. real. That's weird. It's yeah. mostly dude, dogs. They have, people. They have fucking dude. cock sheaths, dude. Yeah, they're, they're out. Yeah. They were out yeah. at a club that I was at the other yeah, night. I, I, yeah, I kick them out. Really? Beat them up. We're at Mixwells, yeah. Yeah, sometimes they wear tails that are like uh, butt plugs. I wonder if it's like uh, talking about that indigenous humanity <laughs> shit. I wonder if that's like a callback to like some tribal shit, like like living with the animals, dressing in animal garb. If that's like, because you think about like indigenous headdresses and animal like white people are in bestiality. Yeah, I never it, thought is about that, is it. Is that like is that like this whole neo future human city thing we have version? Like with it's all like it's like a fucking. It's, it's like being naturally afraid of snakes or something. It's just because we right. They used it's to just eat like a primal thing. Like because humans have always worn like animal parts and danced around and had ceremonies and fucked yeah is it that thing or is it i don't know i think they're fucking weird yeah Yeah, i think they're looking for the next freak shit that they can find yeah i don't know put their penises inside i just want to be a fox fox person i I will i will devil advocates both sides because i'll be like oh maybe it's like an indigenous fucking drive to do this thing and i'll also be like those fucking motherfuckers are weird if you are furry they are fucking weird weird. i think that's it's it's way easier than we make it sometimes like it's just people are freaks (laughs) people just want to do weird things with their dicks and vaginas and that's if you were a furry yeah what animal would you be if i was a furry i would well i've always said if you if you truly reincarnate 
marinate into one animal. I, I like river otters and like birds of prey. So you'd be so like I, a fucking uh, river like, otter. Fuck I'd, li- machine. I'd like to be one of those too. Yeah, dude. I'd, yeah, just that's like hot tub life and shit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, or I do birds of prey where you just grab and shit. Have big ass talons <laughs> while you're fucking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we all know that Luke's preferred. Uh, <laughs> yeah. what, what's your preferred animal? Uh, me, I, I'd be a shark, dude. For Luke's sure. is definitely frog. a dog. A dog. He nah, said frog. He'd be a frog, a but frog? he'd be going froggy no, on doggy. You know what I mean? You get... <laughs> <laughs> Luke. Luke wants to marry his dog. I don't. <laughs> I do love Luke, yeah. my dog. <laughs> But I don't, like, love my dog. <laughs> I just like him a lot, a lot, a lot. Yeah. Make sweet marital dog There's love. There's <laughs> Damn. About to have a litter. It's fucking funny. I think that's a good uh, point to get it. be the end. What? To, br- to bring this to a close, you fuck? Close. You better learn how to bring an ending to an episode better. Everyone was so silent after I said it. I was like, uh Because it was a really down. bad segue, Patrick. That's whole brain segue. shut down at the end of that episode. Well, that yeah. would be a real good way to <laughs> end <laughs> stuff. My bad, okay? Holy Anyways, shit. let's get. where can we uh, follow you? Follow me. Instagram is Danny Gamble underscore in the middle. Uh, oh, sweet, you brought cards. Yeah, I, th- I dropped Fuck those yeah. off for you guys. Hold so. shit up to yeah. the camera. Pat. Higher uh, level art. Check yep, them out. Yep, higherlevelart.com, higherlevelart at gmail.com. I'll give you life advice, life coaching. Uh, yeah, uh, fucking. Uh, I, I, got, I know some people at some shops I'm going to be giving your card cool. to. Yeah. For sure. Word. Dig Dude, it. You were very informative and awesome. Thank Thanks, you man. for uh, showing us uh, all of your crazy uh, stories and oh, everything. Yeah. It was awesome. And Word. let Thanks. us know if you ever do anything with the podcast, man. Yeah, well, I'm thinking yeah, about it, man. I, think I mean, there is a there is a Master network, you know, popping off in oh, 2019. Hell yeah. yeah, you know, we're all about supporting. Uh, cool. You know, yeah, yep. And I might have to holler at you guys too about like the sponsorship thing. I was sponsoring uh, Rand's uh, Rumble Lips podcast uh, for a while, and then just with Christmas and the holidays and the winter time, I'm like, I can't be spending the extra money. But, yeah, uh, no, I hear you. Uh, but yeah, so maybe when the weather gets good again. But uh, uh, yeah, I love, dude, I love podcasts. So like, if I can, if I can sponsor shit, I I do that shit as much as I can. You know what I mean? Just because. So I can get it out there, support the team and stuff. Well, man, we would appreciate it. And also, speaking about sponsors, be sure to check out Neil to No One, man. Neil to No One, (laughs) K-N-E-E-L-T-O-N-O-O-N-E.com. Check him out. Buy his beer, Steins. Buy the new Samurai glasses coming out. The fucking beer cozies. They look fantastic. Follow us at the, uh, the Bastard Sermon on everything. Yeah. As always, check out the Shit Talking Cunts pod- podcast or the SDC podcast, our brother podcast out of Boston with Joey O'Neill. Also, check out his wife's podcast, BTC or Between the Covers. They take weird romance novels and they break them down. They make fun of them and shit like that. Um, Bastard Network shit coming soon. Check us out. Also, the Bastard Bash. Be sure to check that out on our Bastard uh, Saturday, summer. February. Yeah. What the fuck? What is Eighth it? Second? Something. Something. Uh, it's something like that. We'll get that. We'll get dates uh, next episode. But just be aware, it's out there. It's coming. Come fuck, w- uh, get drunk with us. <laughs> Come fuck with us. <laughs> it's going to be great. All right. Thank you. Fuck yeah. See you guys.